Check. And we are underway <laughs> Nick here at Delaware it. Military Academy. It's gonna be, buddy. <laughs> it is going to be Masai Maynard with the opening kickoff. Breaks a few tackles. He'll get out to the 28-yard line. And that's where things will begin here for the home team DMA. As we are here, Nick Allison Drini alongside Mike Lang and Nick Halliday. And we appreciate you joining us on a Friday night. We apologize getting... Up right on time here today, Mike. No time for a pregame show, but the rain has now stopped a little bit, I think, here at Delaware Military Academy. We've got a good one here between the Seahawks and the Archmere Hawks. Seahawks coming in 2-2 two two under head coach Matt Carey in his first season, and Coach John Belace's group we had a chance to check out last week in a great battle against Carabelle. They're 1-3 coming in, but some tough losses and a tough schedule for the Hawks as well heading into tonight. Yeah, they had, I think, five turnovers last week. They need to obviously calm that down this week. and I think it could be competitive with DMA, uh, they're going to have to stop the quarterback. I think he just ran that ball to Odell Teal. And Archmere's saying they came out of the pile with it. Nick, I think we're going to be, we have one chair to share between the two of us. So I think <laughs> halftime we'll, or quarters, we'll switch chairs in. I'm seeing a picture here, so it looks like I think we're good. <laughs> PJ Blessington with the tackle there on first down. A pickup of about four. It was interesting, Nick. Uh, I got here a little early, and uh, I walk in and I hear, there's lightning in the area, clear the stadium. I'm like, oh, great. But they started right on time, so uh, weather cleared, and the great people here at DMA got us going. Here's a handoff. Looks like to Maynard. Not a lot of running room. Good green gang tackling by the Archmere Hawks on second down. On that was apparently Emmons. That's right, Emmons. He is their leading ball and carrier the on the season. You think that that, that gold on blue, it's not too hard to see, but it's uh, that's a, a dark gold. Well, Mike, it looks like we're finally starting to settle in a little bit here. I hope the volume's not coming in too loud for everybody at home, but we are up and running, and now third down, our first of the night. It goes to the Seahawks here in their own territory. First down marker sitting at around the 38. Here's Teal out of the shotgun, fires across the middle, has his man inside the 40. Uh -oh. He's going to break a tackle at the 50, and he's going to get to the sideline. 10, 20 before finally being brought down in the red zone. And that's Malcolm Roy, and you're going to hear that name a few times tonight. Mike, the leading receiver on the year for DMA, his seventh catch. Yeah, it was a nice pass over the middle. I think that was Teal, right? And Miles Kemsky and uh, Cole Finice, I think, teamed up on the tackle. I'm going to get that clock right, Nick. It's 10. And there's a flag on the play, Mike, so hold everything. Back. There is a flag on the play. So let's wait and find out what this is. Big night in uh, high school football across the state. We're here uh, right next to I-95. You can, If you're driving, we shouldn't be watching the game. But if, <laughs> if you have it on your uh, audio, or at least you're listening, and you see the lights right here by, uh, what would it be, not too far from like Frawley Stadium and stuff, that's uh, Fusco Field. That's where we are. You can wave high as you drive by on 95. Fusco Memorial Field here, the yeah. home of the Delaware Military Academy Seahawks. So that's going to go down as a penalty. Well, they did, but it would be on the down run. The, yeah, it's during so the, uh, after during the catch, the I believe. So first down now here for DMA. Fake the jet sweep. Here's Odell Teal now up the middle who has a hole and he's a low to bring Fumble. down oh, his a helmet. helmets. Uh, he's got to come out for a play. Come flying off and Teal with a nice carry. That's going to be a gain of 11 and another first down. I thought that was the ball for a second. It was uh, Teal's helmet. He's going to have to take a play off, but that was a great run. I think uh, Fidis on another tackle. Cole's really busy. I saw him the other day uh, after practice up at Archmere, and he's, he, he knows he's going to be a busy guy. But some good offense so far for uh, for DMA. Into Archmere territory here on the opening drive of the game. 9.50 and ticking here at Fusco Memorial Stadium. Teal now in the shotgun. And it's actually not Teal. It's going to be a jet sweep on a flip to Salim Frank. I did have a chance to see DMA against Salesiana in the season opener during that pigskin classic, and yeah, they played Sally's pretty well. Tackle made by 
I thought I heard two when I came in. It was homecoming tonight. And That's right. Long, nice long halftime for you. <laughs> and a nice student section on hand here at Delaware Military Academy. About second and five here for the uh, Seahawks, Nick. So that was a new quarterback in the last play. Seems Teal's back in the game here after the helmet came off. He'll fake the read, keeping himself, trying to get up the middle and yeah, pick he, up about two. He got about two, and he's down at the uh, 30. They're going to need to get to the 27 or so. With uh, 850 to go, they've already chewed up uh, three plus minutes. And it's always a lot of uh, Teal here at the DMA. I mean, Edmonds is a good runner, though. How's that backpack when he uses it? Already? <laughs> it's doing good. We're, doing, we're making it through. I'm seeing if there's any chairs we can steal in the main part of the press I already box, checked. That's <laughs> probably a no-go. So third and four. Here for DMA at their own 30-yard line. You get to the 26. I formation for Teal and the Seahawks. As Edmonds is the tailback. He fumbled the snap. Is Teal going to have to hop back on it? He tries to lean forward for as much as he can get, and he's about going to get maybe a yard. And now it's going to set up fourth down, and you might see the offense remain out on the field here for DMA. Well, it's going to make a fourth and about three. They, they actually gained a yard out of that. Um, I mean, this is obviously four down territory. They're not going to, I don't think they have anybody that can kick that ball 45 yards for a field goal. Only a few teams have that luxury. The turf is a little wet, so footing's probably not the best. Well, offense going to stay out. Fourth and three here in the opening quarter. Opening drive for the homecoming Delaware Military Academy Seahawks. Teal's going to be under center in the I formation with Emmons as the tailback and now a timeout. We did get a, uh, a shower before the game. Um, we were all thrilled about that. <laughs> but it was there's no play. lightning was, in the air. It was in and out. It was a uh, rain for a few minutes. Nick, a lot of action tonight. We're going to get you scores as we go along when, when we can. And uh, of course, the big game in the state right here at DMA, DMA with some other games Bay. going on. Of course, thanks to our sponsor, First Aid Orthopedics. So as we said, we got a couple good games on the schedule here this weekend, including one tomorrow, Mike. You'll have a little Saturday matinee action. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of maroon. We talked about this on the uh, that were Live Weekly the other night. It's going to be Milford at St. E's in Class 2A and Class 1A. And had that Milford roster under Coach Jed Bell. That's right. 53 players. Though. Knows how to get them out. They had a, uh, a lot of maroon last week. Benny Mitchell had them on last week against Concord. 35-0 win over the Raiders. So Milford... Uh, Playing well, and they're coming up to Wilmington tomorrow. We'll have that one for you at a noon kickoff at Abyssinia Stadium. Here we go. Teal under center, fourth and three for the Seahawks. High formation. They're going to hand it off to Emmons. Not a lot of running room, and he's not going to get there. He's stopped behind the line of scrimmage. P.J. Blessington, one of the first to get there. And the Hawks able to force a turnover on downs on DMA's opening possession and kind of what we saw the reverse of last week for them, who went down the field on their opening drive and ended up fumbling on first down as soon as they got into Caravelle territory. This time the defense for Archmere coming up big here early. Yeah, they're, they're a good defense. They're a bend but don't break type of defense. They're going to give up some yards. Uh, the one thing about Archmere, a lot of their guys play two ways, Blessington and Kemsky and Finise, chief among them, and That's then right. a lot of the linemen. So, uh, you know, they, we'll see how, how they hold up over four quarters, but that's a big stop. Maybe it gives them a little bit of, uh, of uh, deep momentum. motion. There They'll give it to that. Hagenberg, the motion man on first down. Has a little bit of running room to the outside. He'll be brought down after a gain of it looks like about five. So good first down yardage for Archmere. I think my microphone is wet from the rain. Freak comes up with the stop. They'll officially call it six on first down. So Hagenberg, kind of that utility guy. Six the play, he plays a lot of receiver, can come in motion and get some of the work in the backfield as well. Drew Duncan's the lone receiver here at the bottom of the screen on second and four from their own 37. Duncan, primarily a lacrosse player, but he's really a heck of an athlete, good football player as well. 
They're going to hand off to Cole Finise up the middle, I believe. I think it was Kale Denegris who got him, right, 77? And Kale Denegris, one of the captains. That's actually Blessington on the carry. I apologize. Game of two for P.J. Blessington. The two guys you're going to look at carrying the ball, or at least you should say three, are going to be Miles Kemsky, P.J. Blessington, and Cole Finise. So there's going to be three of the main ball carriers, say, for Archmere. And then look for Hagenberg and Drew Duncan to be who they target in the air. Yeah, we talked about, we had Archer on the show a couple weeks ago. Miles Kemsky's coming in as a senior, starting a quarterback. He's played a lot of other positions because they had a quarterback the last few years. And I think Miles has done a great job uh, so far for Archer. One and three, but I think they're a little better than the record. Third and three, big third down here. Slot to the right side for Kemsky and the Hawks. The ball looking for Blessington. Couldn't get it, and that's going to be a turnover recovered by DMA. Number 50, John Tate, the senior was the first to hop on it. And the DMA, whose offense turned it over on downs, gets it right back in another mental mistake for Archmere. Well, we talked about it before the game, uh, right when the game started. The turnovers killed him last week. You were there. That's right. They hung with Caravelle most of that game. I know that one of the Millers, was, I think Craig was out, right? But uh, he got a hold on the ball, and Coach Police, I'm sure, drilled that into them at practice this week. So DMA offense back out onto the field now. In Archmere territory, first and 10 from the Auk 37. Roy and Maynard in a slot to the left side. Teal now sitting in the shotgun. Emmons, the running back to his right. Here's the snap, Teal looking down the field. Here comes the pressure. Out of the pocket, going to loft it, looking for his man. It hits the back of the Archmere defender who is going out in coverage. Good job there by Kemsky, who... Got beat deep, but able to recover. And the ball just a tad bit underthrown by Teal. Yeah, he had a lot of room, Nick. I think he probably could have taken off and, and run and gotten a lot of yardage there. But, uh, you know, he's the quarterback. Saw a guy open and just didn't get the ball where he wanted it. But uh, I'm sure that's something they'll go back to later in the game. And he was looking for Alex Mosel, the sophomore, who was lined up. Kind of in that, that flanker slot position here to the right. He's going to be back at it on second and ten. Here comes Roy. Nick, I just want to apologize to our viewers. I'm producing the clock is my worst <laughs> thing here. So I'm, I'm hey, we're happy fixed. to have a crew. It's us, me, you, and Nick working it today. Jet sweep to Malcolm Roy. Roy following his blockers. Going to cut it inside. Flags come flying. Yeah, and whatever yardage they got is coming one, back. That's, that's prime hole territory there. The Tackle play. made by Francis Morta, the freshman for Archmere. And now we'll look down to the field and see what the call is. Oh, it's a procedure Francis call. So they may have had uh, too many guys in the backfield or something along those lines. Not a 10-yard penalty, though, so DMA uh, only takes a 5-yard hit there. Yeah, they had, again, as we mentioned, Mosel kind of in that flanker position here to the right side. And then Roy went in motion. And then came back across for the jet sweep. So an issue there. Now that'll back him up. Second and 15, 524 and ticking here in the first quarter. DMA homecoming here on a Friday. Appreciate you all joining us for this one. Going to be a good one between the Seahawks and the Hawks. Yeah, they've really developed quite a rivalry over the uh, past couple of years. And that semifinal was a heck of a football game a couple years Dude, ago. That was a great one. Two receivers to the bottom, or actually trips to the bottom of the screen here for Teal. Looking across the middle, was looking for Mosel. That's great timing there by the defender. I'm not sure who that was. Uh, Miles Kemsky was able to hit him just as that ball arrived. And yeah, you see him, Hagenberg, and Finise. So now it's going to bring up third and 15 with the penalty on this drive, Mike. So third and long here for Odell Teal and DMA. DMA coming in, as we mentioned, two and two on the season under first-year head coach here at DMA, Matt Carey. Yeah, I think the Hawks uh, just brought in, I think it was Morta. He just came in, maybe he's a little bit speedier trying to get to Teal. Uh, you don't want to... We give him a lot of room because he can run for this first down as well. But Third and 15. He's chucking. Looking for Mosel again the third straight time. And this one has gone up and broken up over the top. That's Miles Kempsey from that safety position. Once again, great in coverage. And now the punt unit coming on for DMA is Teal was looking for number seven. Kempsky lined that up. I think he was waiting for that ball to come down and time to jump and was able to, to whack it away from the receiver. So Miles had that lined up and uh, Archmere 
withstands the fumble and, and is likely to go back on offense here. You just never know until the play happens, right? So. Back to kick for is number and I said I have to take some pictures, right? I didn't take any yet. So we'll get some in there. Nick, we're a multimedia type of people <laughs> up here. Company men. I'm using the field for these games. It's kind of sometimes a little weird being yeah, in the bring, booth. Bring you up to the booth. That's right. Is you get your color? You getting a lot of your uh, color right, in here this year as well, tomorrow. right? Yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> that snap is tonight. going to be snagged out of the air and just well, lucky maybe. to get it off was Jordan Holden, and it's going to take a hell, a heck of a DMA roll. That may have been deflected, but it ends up being a DMA. And that's a heck of a uh, punt by the senior, Jordan Holden, who pins it deep inside the Archmere 10. Down to the seven. Yeah, it's got some work to do now. DMA's defense pretty good in that first series, forcing the, uh, that ball was down by the number fumble. Nine, Masai Maynard, Masai Maynard was yeah. the first to get to it. He's been calling his name quite a bit. So now the Archmere offense back out onto the field. And it was the offense that struggled a good opening drive last week against Caravelle, but it stalled out the rest of the game. That safety was on the board. Their only points on the board for a while. Kemsky on the year for 145 yards. Two touchdowns, averaging 148 yards a game. And he'll start this drive in the shotgun deep in his own territory. Hand up off the middle here to Cole Finis on first down. He just got to hang on to that ball. You know, Finis kind of bouncing up and down there during his run. And he does a good job. Cole's also there. Their punter, they are also multitaskers. Running back, receiver, linebacker, punter. He does it all. So Finise takes that first down carry for a gain of six. Cole knows all about pinning people deep in, the, in their own territory. That's right, we saw a couple of those last week. 4 11 and ticking here in the first quarter. Second and four after the first down carry by Cole Finise. Two receivers, one to either side here for Kemsky, who sits in the gun. Back to Finise they go, and he runs right into some Seahawks, a group of them. They may give him the forward progress up. Well, they're going to say the 16-yard uh, line, so not as much as I thought he might get. On the carry again. In fact, they may mark him for a loss. 13, Christopher Trumbull and Dante Brooks and in on the tackle for Joshua DMA. Boy. So a gain of two for Finise on that carry. Third and now that'll set up third and one. It's probably like that Jason Winchell producing. He, he, he talk and do the uh, clock and everything else. Third and one from their own 17 for Kemsky and company. They'll turn back to Finise, and he's wrapped up. Kale DeNegris alongside Odell Teal. Drag him down in the backfield, and that's a big stop and a big push up front from that Delaware military defensive line. And now Archmere are going to have to send out the punt unit. That's three and out. I think we have a stoppage of play. Uh, no, 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 they only gained nine yards, Nick, and DMA is looking forward to some good field position here with uh, 2.55 to go in the first half. Who's running this clock anyway? And there was a, a little bit of commotion going on out there down where the ball is being spotted. The helmets are off for some players. Seems like we figured it out. It's, uh, I think it was Referee Appreciation Week this week, too. That's right. And we appreciate them and everything they do. 2.30 and ticking. That's yeah. another good punt. Malcolm Roy going to try to track it down. He will at the 30. Going to try to get to the sideline. He's at the 40, and he gets to about midfield. And then a late push here closes. Some of the momentum, nothing dirty there, just carried Archmere to the sideline. But a heck of a return from the speedy Malcolm Roy. And that's going to give DMA pretty good field positioning here on their second drive. Or third drive, I should say, of the ball game. Sometimes it seems to be more popular now to... Uh, to pick that ball up as it's bouncing and rolling. And, uh, you know, usually used to hearing coaches yell poison or whatever else they they want to yell during the play. That's a good pump by Finise with a nice return by Yeah, that's uh, a heck Roy. of a punt. Looks like Middletown driving at Smyrna. We'll give you an update when we have one. High formation for DMA here. First and 10, they'll start this one. From their own 48-yard line, Josh Roy, the fullback. Emmons, the tailback. Emmons has it up the left side. Nice cut now. Bouncing it to the outside. He's to the sideline. See you later. Emmons into the end zone. And DMA opening up the scoring. Six to nothing Seahawks. A huge touchdown 
for Edward Emmons, the senior running back, who had a hole up the middle and then able to bounce it to the sideline and then turn on the burners. And he's going to go 52 yards for a touchdown in DMA. Lead 6 to nothing here in the first. Got to the outside, and you said, uh, see you later. It was all over. So Emmons makes them... Uh, Makes Harshmere uh, pay for the three and out. Here's Brady Appleton, the lefty coming in for the extra point attempt. Flags fly as he buries it through. We'll see point who that's on. Probably put that point Brady up there. Appleton, there is a flag on the play. And we'll await the call here down on the field. So as now you see Brady Appleton counting up his men on the extra point team. And it just looks like maybe too many or too less or too many men on the field. Update from Smyrna. It's Middletown, seven Smyrna, no score. Middletown getting off to an early lead in the Harvest Bowl. So a discussion with head coach John Blaise to see what he wants to do here with the penalty. Yeah, do you make him uh, kick it again? Or, well, the option is they give him the point. Not much of an option here, is there? <laughs> and one thing we talked about with Coach Blaze last week, and I know he was referencing the game against Caravelle, the top team in Class 2A, but he said one thing that his defense has to do is limit the big plays. And they did a pretty good job of that last week against that Caravelle team till later in the ball game, a few big runs and big scoring plays. But that's what Coach Blaze kind of referenced. Is the penalty going to back him up? They'll retry the extra point from a little bit deeper, but a big play for Emmons. And the Seahawk offense there, Mike. This is a 35-yard extra point attempt, so this is uh, this is no chip shot for most high school kickers. Snap, hold is good. The kick from Appleton looks wide left, and it will be. Would have been a tough extra point, NFL yeah. extra point, here at Fusco Memorial Stadium. So with 2:10 remaining here in the opening quarter, it's DMA on their third offensive possession, opening things up. A 52-yard touchdown for Edward Emmons. Has the Seahawks leading six to nothing after the missed PAT. And now the Archmere offense gonna come back out onto the field, Mike, in, a, in an offense that has talent and can execute. We've seen it before, but they gotta limit the mental mistakes and some of the turnovers that they've been experiencing uh, here this season. And they reiterated that to us last week as well. Yeah, I mean, turnovers are hurt. They had one tonight, that did not hurt them, but the uh, punt return did. Their inability to move the ball much out of their own red zone. Uh, not, not the MA's red zone, their own red zone really hurt them. But it's early, 2.10 to go here. That was, that was a long extra point period there. <laughs> it was, and Archmere hasn't put the ball in the air yet tonight. Only a few plays, though, offensively for Kemsky and company on two drives. You saw him throw the ball a decent amount last week in that game against Caravelle. He's got some good receivers. Yeah, Gavin Lee is Drew Duncan. And Drew Duncan. Cole Finese out of the slot, had six receptions in that game last week as the kick is away. And it's gonna be Hagenberg here for Archberry who has it. Makes a bad miss, makes two Seahawks miss it. He's dragged down from behind at the 35, so a good return for the Hawks, giving them a little bit of life as the offense head back out onto the field. So uh, Hagenberg gives them uh, some room to work and uh, now they can take advantage. So it's here comes the right. offense. Ryan Hagenberg is his older brother, I believe, graduated. First Dustin graduated Archmere last year. So her name was familiar, and again, uh, Archmere, one of those teams to watch and pay attention to the last few years. That success of the undefeated season that earned them a trip to the White House a few years back. Yeah. Correct. First and ten from the 35 for Archmere as they trail six to nothing now here on the road. Kemsky in the shotgun, Finis sitting, sitting to his left. He'll take the handoff up the middle, and that defensive line for DMA is getting a great push early. And not a lot of running room. A group of Seahawks, Kale DeNegris in there alongside Josh Roy. And Fenice, we saw pick up a few yards, at least a pop last week against Caravelle, maybe one of the toughest defenses in the state. Can't really get nothing going here early against this DMA front. Well, Kale is, he might be the top lineman in the state, yeah. Kale DeNegris. And, and I don't care what class you're talking about, one, two, or three. The kid flat out play. He's going to be playing on Saturdays, and uh, he, he's a he's a really really good great player. kid as well. I have a chance to talk to him the last few years. A state champion wrestler, heavyweight last year for DMA as well. Second and nine for Kemsky and the Hawks. 
Let's see if he drops back here at all. There he goes. He'll throw. Here comes the pressure from DMA. They brought the blitz. The throw out of the slot is caught. A diving catch that time by Brendan Burke. But we didn't mean to leave Burke out for their receiving for him. Brendan is a good, good receiver. So we'll call that a gain of five on Miles Kemsky's first completion on his first pass attempt today. Yeah, we're uh, inside the final minute here. Archer still facing a third and about four here, so they, they're going to need some yardage on third down. They, they're not picking up big chunks, but they are moving the ball. Big touchdown uh, for Smyrna up the middle. A 60-yarder going to make it 7-6 to six his first down, first quarter winding down down at Middletown High School. Third and four, 30 seconds of ticking here in the first quarter. Big third down for Archmary, who needs to get a first down here to give that offense some momentum. Three receivers for Kemsky, who's out of the gun. They're going to hand it to Hagenberg, who was coming in motion from the other side. Flags fly before he touched the football. He was dragged down about a yard short of the first down marker. Yeah, it was John Bradley on the run. Joshua Roy, number 23. Number 11. And we'll see... Now with the flags are. People look like they were moving a little bit earlier or something there. 14.6 to go. And stopped at least for the moment. Oh, Mike Lang's clock right on the button. <laughs> and it's going to be against Archmere. That's just, the whole play looked weird. And it's going to be another legal procedure. So five yards. I think they made two men in motion. During that and they've play. done that, as you mentioned, Mike. That's the third or second or third time that's happened here in the first quarter. And it happened on the same play as last time. As you mentioned, this time coming around. Uh, in receiving the handoff with Bradley. And last time it was Hangenberg. Both plays, though, were stopped due to a penalty. And now we'll replay third down. Yeah, but now, now they third need and nine. nine. <laughs> DMA defense has been good so far tonight, especially here behind this crowd at homecoming at home. I'm having trouble getting used to the clock running after penalties. We'll see if they get a playoff. Three seconds in ticking. Will they snap the football? They will. Kemsky looking to throw here on third and nine. Fires to the sideline, has Bradley, who makes the catch and falls forward for a first down. Pass complete to number 11, John Bradley. Tackle by number eight, Red Evans. Okay, this is... And that's the end of the first quarter with the score, six seven Seahawks. There we go, Nick. I think it's like back That'll here. take us to the end of the first quarter. Apologize if you just saw what we saw on the screen. Some technical difficulties, but we are rocking and rolling. That'll do it for one here at Fusco Memorial Stadium. It's homecoming here for the Seahawks. They lead the Ox six to nothing. We'll be right back. <laughs> Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all this seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. I would always... Uh, we're back. I'll get the First and 10 is the handoff is going to be faked, and now it's Kemsky who got tripped up by the turf monster up near... The 45, but a good fake for the quarterback and a nice run on first down. As the Archmere offense starting to build some momentum, a big third down conversion to end the first quarter. On and now that first down carry going to be good for about eight yards. I need to get the scoreboard back. There we go. Kemsky's first carry of the ball game today. I'm had such about an amateur. 10 last week. <laughs> Don't worry about the scoreboard. We're happy to just be up and running here. 11 23 and ticking six to nothing dma out in front here at home oh my goodness now it's going to be four wide receivers trips to the top of the screen for miles kemsky i mean archer's moving the ball a little bit see if they can like sustain it you know they're just having trouble 
And there's another, there's another and timeout. Every time that Archmere has brought that motion, there's been a flag. As now a flag in the from the back judge or the back of the field, excuse me. And that's going to be a delay of game, I believe, the call out on the field for Archmere and another mental mistake for the Hawks. It's got to be driving the coaching staff crazy. And you're looking at the back judge with the arm going up. Five-yard penalty on the play. Delay of game. I mean, these are, these are big yards for these guys. You know, they, they, uh, they got a first down in that last drive. Seven, four, and again, we saw this out of them a few times last week against Caravelle. Had the offense really moving, but mental mistakes, a few unforced turnovers. Hurt them in the long run. And now back to the four wide receiver set here on second and seven after the penalty. Speed option to the right. Pitch from Kemsky over to Colfinis. An open field tackle made by Josh Roy. And number 23 in blue has been all over the field here defensively in this first over a little bit over a quarter of action. Cole just couldn't get outside. Uh, Roy just beat him out there. Went low, took him out. Great play by Roy. See now the third and medium range. Uh, you know, it's doable for Archman, sure. You know, they, they like that short pass, so expect something to Duncan or Bradley. Now to bring up third down, 10 5 and ticking. Third and six, first down sitting at the DMA 43 yard line. Four receivers set once again for Kemsky, who has Finis sitting to his right in the gun. Here's the snap. Kemsky looking one-on-one -on -one for Drew Duncan. It's a jump ball. Malcolm Roy jumps with him. Almost able to haul it in, but will break it up in the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Malcolm Roy, the big defensive play, and now the punt unit coming out for Archmere. Took a shot. Uh, you know, the ball just underthrown a little bit, and, and they were able to knock that down. Duncan kind of helped to make sure there was no interception. Malcolm Roy and Josh Roy, not sure if they're related. You might... Uh, insinuate that they are, but they're both having great starts here today. Malcolm Roy having a heck of a season as well as Josh Roy. I had a chance to talk with Malcolm a few years back, or actually it was last year to open up the season in that opener against Howard here. A great kid for here uh, for the Seahawks. Finise now, no rush coming here, and he'll have an easy boot away. Fair catch wave for by Roy, and he'll haul it in at the 10 yard line. So that's where the DMA offense will start their next drive. With 9.36 to go here in the second quarter. Big boomy kick by, uh, by Finis. And, and we're uh, used to seeing that now. Yeah, he's got them pinned. I think they're inside the 20, right? The, uh, in the 10, yeah, at, at the, the 10. 10. yard line. So that's a good kick by Cole Finis. Gives you a little stat update. Edward Emmons, who we'll see here in a moment, running back number eight for DMA. Three carries, 53 yards and a touchdown. Of course, that 52-yard touchdown, the difference scoring-wise here. Odell Teal, three carries for 14 yards. He's also one of four. For 20 yards, that completion to Malcolm Roy back in the first quarter. The packed house here at DMA. Yeah, good crowd on hand. He'll fake the sweep, handoff back up the middle. Here and about I five believe yards Josh Roy on about first about, down. About, uh, Looks like they started around the 13 yard line, right? So maybe they got three on that one. And Evans, number eight. Carry to Edmonds. And as you said, Mike picks up three. Tackle made by number 60, Jack Chestnut. Second and seven for the Seahawks. Oh, here, I'll stand up for a few minutes. No, I'm good. I'm good to go. No way. I had to stand up just to get out of the chair. <laughs> Shotgun here on second and seven. We got wires everywhere here. Nick and I are in a little. We'll phone deal booth. with the uh, with the <laughs> hardwire connection. Great connection yeah, here oh, at yeah. DMA. As Teal this time fakes the handoff, he'll keep it himself, and the quarterback keeper out around the edge might be enough for a new first down. I think you got it by plenty. And he is a gain of nine for Teal. Takes him out to the. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 29 yard line. 28 yard line is where the referee settles in. 8.45 to go here in the first half. DMA homecoming clock stop for the moment here as Teal was pushed out of bounds. 50-50 raffle going on around here in front of us. A nice student section. I don't know. I don't know what the uh, honor code system. Are we allowed to enter? Why not, right? It's raising money for the school. Game of chance, right? 
8.45 to go, second quarter. Teal now in the shotgun. Hands it off, back up the middle. I think I saw Blessington on that tackle. They were able to penetrate a little bit. And uh, it looks like uh, Hagenberg is also in there. And they said that was Emmons. I thought it looked like Josh Roy on the carry. Another Morta, Francis Morta's brother, Nate. And that was on that Roy on the carry. Team. So that was Roy up the middle for a yard. And now second and nine, Mike. 8-11 and ticking trips to the top of the screen here. Low snap, Teal goes and gets it. Now it's a broken play. He's going to have to make something happen. Getting chased. What a stiff oh, wow. arm by Odell Teal at the 30. We heard the, cr we heard the crowd. Just the uh, gas going on when he hit oh, throughout that Hale stiff arm. And that'll be a gain of a few yards on the broken play for Teal. But it is third and about six. So a big play by Jack Lewis. They, they're going to need... A big stop here for the offense. Jack DeLose, one of the captains six. for Archmere. Stiff arm. I do that to my dog every <laughs> once in a while when she's trying to get to my dinner. I stiff arm her right out of the way. <laughs> that was a powerful stiff arm by number two. And now third down here for DMA. Seven minutes, 29 seconds to go. First half action. Six to nothing. Seahawks leading. I should bring her to the game one of these weeks. Yes, you should. Bring your, I'll bring the dog. You bring your kid. <laughs> They can hang out next to us. Sure, why not? They're probably about the same size. Teal has room to throw. Going to fire to the sideline. Diving and making the catch. Archer Did he? no catch. Ball's incomplete. Clock is stopped, so that's an incomplete pass. So pass it's right in front of the Ox bench. And they were, you can see the coaches waving at it. They, uh, they said, no way. <laughs> Sam Frank, the intended target that time for Odell Teal, who completed his first pass, but has missed on his last four. And now fourth and six, and the punt team out for DMA. So that's good D there by the Ox. Gave up a couple yards in that scramble by Teal. Other than that, they really held them pretty good on that one. And we saw that out of them last week. The defense was good against a very tough Caravelle offense, even without one of the Millers. Good snap. Kick is a line drive okay. off a hop. It's oh, going to be fielded that? by Hagenberg. Hagenberg now with room to run. Cuts back inside at the 40, dives forward inside the 40 to the 36. Punt and flag. So Nick, the runner, the receiver on that one, the uh, DMA player basically outran the, outran the play. Outran, that's right. Outran and the, I believe that was Bradley who returned that and had a head start. Now we'll see who the penalty is on. I can't find the white hat. There he is. Face mask on DMA. So that's going to move him 15 more yards unless it's the five-yard variety. I've heard they only have the one in high school, but I've seen both called. So Hagenberg with the return got him out to the DMA 37, and that's going to tack on, I believe, 15 more, Mike, here after the face or after the return with the face mask. So by far the best starting field position and best field position in general here tonight for the Archmere Ox. Yes, yeah, 7-0-1 to go here. And Mike, it looks like it's not going to be a 15-yarder. It is a five-yarder. Okay. So from the 37 to the 32. Here for Archmere, who are going to spread things out. Double slot on first down. Seven minutes to go. One running back to the left of Miles Kemsky. The snap. Going to fire to the sideline. That ball might have been tipped by Odell Teal. Teal does everything, doesn't he? How many quarterbacks you know are edge rushers? <laughs> and defensive ends, not many. He, uh, I saw DMA a few times last year. And... Uh, Every time, he, you know, you always knew he was there. He stood out. He just got himself quite a presence on the field. Double slot again for Archmere. Here on second down and 10. This time it's designed quarterback power to the right side, and he's wrapped up from behind. Not enough brotherly shove on that one. <laughs> so looking at a third and seven here. Three, the DMA front with the Negress and that they're big, you know, and it's tough to get them. Archer they're tough, really not just big, but very good as well. Yeah, you're right. Archer's got a couple big guys, but, you know, they're not going to match up in size, but across the line, you know, they do have some big kids on that, on that line for Archmere. 623, third and seven, and a big third down for Archmere. Need to get to the DMA 22-yard line. Trips to the top, speed option, and... Blessington breaks a tackle, but DMA was not fooled by that one. Denigris, one of the first ones to get there alongside a few other Seahawks. Josh Roy into the mix. 
And now fourth down, Mike, you're kind of tailoring that line. Looks like we'll see the offense remain out of the field here for head coach John Belase. You have to go here. Yeah, you're, you're, if he needs to kick this one under the practice field down the, down the hill from here, there's really a, and they don't have a field goal kicker who can kick this kind of distance. Uh, this is almost a 48-yard field goal here, so there's no way. You have to go for it here. Offense out on the field. Gavin Lee, the receiver to the top of the screen, trips to the bottom. It's Drew Duncan near the sideline. Kemski and the Hawks need four. Here's the snap. Kemski looking to Gavin Lee. The slant is fired. He Did he haul it in? It was behind the receiver, and Gavin Lee goes behind and grabs it. That's a great job. Uh, Lee reaching back and sliding and getting that one. To the 18, a gain of 11 for Gavin Lee, and a big first down for the Hawks. That ball thrown behind Lee, who somehow reached back, grabbed it, held on, and had enough. 5.08 and ticking, new set of downs for the Hawks now in the red zone at the DMA 18. They'll turn back to P.J. Blessington up the middle, but that run game just can't get going as that DMA front, once again, with a good push, can limit that carry to a few yards. Yeah, they've, well, I'll say he got to the 15, but he looks like he's closer to the 17. You're looking at a, a yard gain on that. P.J. Blessington, three carries now for seven yards. Been a struggle for this Archmere run game so far. 34 yards of total rushing offense for Archmere here in the first half. Second and eight. Motion from Hagenberg. This is where we've seen the issues. Fake it. Now Kemski with room to run. Beats the corner to the outside. Going to try to square the shoulders, and he's dragged out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Good job there by Kemski. Knew he was going to take a hit. He's not afraid to take a bump. And uh, good job by Miles. He gets down to the eight-yard eight line, is it? Looks like an eight-yard eight carry. Yeah, he's at the seven. So first and goal here, Nick, with... Uh, Four and 19. They'll start that clock once the uh, once the chains are set. Three carries, 19 yards now, or excuse me, 20 yards for Miles Kemski, seven. and now Archmere in striking distance. Oh no, he was bounced out of bounds, so they will not start the clock. And, and now a whistle. Coach John Belay's not happy about something. He's halfway and on the field. Archmere. He'll use his first time out of the first Archmere half, first. and the clock will stop with 4:19 to go here in half number one. Mike, six to nothing. Welcome. Of course, appreciate you joining us here on Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison, Drini alongside Mike Lang. Nick Halliday on top of the box, and we are thrilled to be here at Fusco Memorial Stadium. A shout-out to Jeremy John and DMA for having us uh, here tonight on a special night for them, homecoming here tonight for the Seahawks, and it's in front of a packed house here yeah, on you know, Middleborough Road. When it started pouring, not just raining, it's right pouring. Right before, yeah, about 20 minutes before kickoff, Nick, half Nick hour. said, hey, we can't put the camera out and this stuff. I said, we can try to set it up. In, in here, or we, we shot through the windows before, but Nick's upstairs, it, it cooled off. It's a, a nice night out. We have the window open, and a good, not really a breeze. The heater was on here, Nick. How about that? <laughs> I'll tell you, that one caught us <laughs> off guard. Jacket we, was uh, <laughs> we couldn't figure out why it was, it was so, so hot, hot in here. here. <laughs> it took us about 10 minutes, and the heater was on. I smelled and your my jacket. jacket yep, it almost got burned up a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Archer, you know, they rely on that run game, and, and DMA is built to stop the run, so uh, and Archer can get, can get runs for first downs like they did with Kemski. That's a plus for them. First and goal, they'll overload the right side. Kemski going to try to follow Blessington and Finise to the outside. Kemsky Flags come flying, and Mike, you think we might have another penalty here against an Arch Archmere offense on the way they lined up there before the snap. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be And there it is call. again. So that is the third procedure call here against Archmere. Obviously, Something is not working. For no, that and it's every time they go in motion here behind the line of scrimmage. Somebody's not anyway, getting coach, set coach back on the line of scrimmage. He wants to know what they're doing that's forcing that call. And, and the official should have already told him, you know, after the first or second call. He's out there with Drew Duncan, but I think he's probably talking to that side judge while he's out there. First and goal from the 12. I mean, moves him back to the 12. Not the end of the world, but, you know, when, you know, when you're fighting for all your yards. You don't want to give up a five spot right there. Now first and goal from the 12, which used to be first and goal from the seven. Here's Kemski in the shotgun, a back to either side. He'll look to throw, looking for Duncan. Here comes the pressure. Nobody open. Kemski firing, looking, and in oh, and out of the hands oh, no, of his intended target, Brendan Burke, as the defender had his back to Kemski, trying to loft it over his head. 
and almost was able to do it, but good defense able to break it up. And now second down. First got some height. You know, I've seen Brendan make those plays. That was a tough one. Though. Good effort there by Archmere, but uh, unable to hang on. Now this is a spot where they, if they don't score a touchdown, they might try a field goal here. So maybe they figure they can play a little bit more, uh, do a little bit more here. But you obviously you want you want seven points. And that's what they're thinking. Second and goal now from the 12 after the incompletion. Hagenberg now to the top all by himself. Kemski was looking that way. They'll send out Finise out of the backfield. Has the catch at the 10, trying to get upfield. And a nice catch from Finise and picks up a good chunk on second down. He's going to be dragged down around the four, the three-yard line. And now you're looking at potentially here two-down territory at the goal line for Archmere. Yeah, Nick, I didn't start my clock, and I don't think the clock operator started the clock. We still have four or three to go here in the half. So a little bonus football. <laughs> Gotta love it. Finisa's first catch today. It was good for eight. Third and goal for Archmere from the three. The snap. And there was broken up and brought down before it even got started. It looks like Odell Teal, who came off the edge, and wrapped him up in the backfield. There was a fake and then a handoff, and Teal almost wrapped up both of the running backs. Yeah, now you got a decision to make. So a loss of two on the carry, and now fourth down and goal from the six-yard line. DMA's defense trying to bend but not break deep in their own territory. Kemski in the shotgun trips to the bottom of the screen. Here's the snap to Kemski. They'll roll him out of the pocket here on fourth down. Lofting oh, for Finise and he's got him. Cole Finise for six. Finise got away from the defense. They keep him wide open. Cole Finise, a six yard touchdown catch. Courtesy of Miles Kemski. That's a uh, well-designed play. They run that play a lot. I've seen Archer a couple times this year. That's something they love to do. And when they needed it the most, fourth down and goal from the six-yard line after losing two on third down. The Hawks go to one of their most reliable players in Cole Finise. And now he'll stay out and try to bang this through the uprights to give Archmere the lead. 6-6 six, six ball game awaiting the PAT for the Hawks. Is that Cole kicking? It is. Of course it is. There's the snap, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. And just like that, Archmere takes a 7-6 lead. I gave the point to DMA, that was... Sorry, Hawks fans. I'm not gonna be allowed back on campus. 3.14 to play here in the first half between Archmere and DMA. Good recovery by Archmere. They, had, they got stuffed on that, on that third down play and were able to convert a fourth. And, and they may have been the first, first fourth down. And maybe there were one other one. But uh, that's, a, that's a nice play for Archmere. Big third downs also. Big conversion for Archmere. And they're able to punch it in for their first touchdown of the ball game. DMA scored on the home run. Archmere has gone you know, 90, 90 feet at a time. And it all started the best field position. A putt return from Hagenberg got him in DMA territory to the 37. A five-yard penalty tacked on at the end. So they started the drive at the 32. And they take it 32 yards for a touchdown. I had to use a baseball analogy because it is Red October, right? <laughs> it is Red October. Indeed. A lot of action tomorrow. You can catch a nice schedule for us, Mike. Check it out. 12 o'clock. You can have your check out you and Jason tomorrow as we have maybe... Not an offside, stayed behind the line of scrimmage. Just one's butted away. That's a heck of a kick from Finise. It'll be a touchback. Yeah. But we got 12 o'clock, Milford and St. E's right here on Delaware Live Sports, followed by the University of Delaware Blue Hens welcoming in Duquesne. A kickoff set for 3 o'clock. So you can Duke, go from 12 Tom. right to 3. And then right after Delaware, the Philadelphia Phillies. First pitch against the Atlanta Braves in the NLDS, 6.07. So you got us at 12, Delaware at 3, and then the Phillies at 6.07. A nice day of uh, sports in the area here tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, I'm in a tough spot because. Uh, St. Benedict's Prep Soccer is at Abyssinia That's Stadium. Right. They are like number one in the country. And they've got a, the National Player of the Year on their team, a young man by the name of Ransford John. And uh, not Jeremy nice John. There. It's Ransford John, G-Y-A-N. And I am excited to see him and the rest of the Gray Bees play. <laughs> and, uh, and hoping the Delaware team can pull off that would be a mild upset. 
Well, here's DMA now after the Archmere touchdown. They go right back to Emmons, and he's wrapped up in the backfield on his first carry. Uh, 53, 51, is that Deloche? Uh, 53. Yeah, that was, was a group of guys, Bell, Deloche, and Cox. So, so those three Bell, guys big time. Bell gets the primary on that one. Uh, be able to get through that line. That's a, no a big line there for DMA. You know? They always have big kids on the line. I don't know what they're, what they're feeding them in that mess hall. Besides the 52-yard touchdown for Emmons, his other four carries have gone for just four total yards. So Archmere did a great job against Miller last week. And doing a good job against Emmons, except for that home run hit earlier. Second and 10 after the carry on first down. Teal fakes it. He's rolling out of the pocket. Fires. Has Josh Roy in the flat. Up the sideline goes Roy at the 40. Takes a shot at the 42. And a big completion for Teal. As Josh Roy going to keep this drive alive and get DMA out to their own 45-yard line. Excuse me, out to the 41. A gain of 21. And that's a Seahawks. First down. Yeah, good Second job by them. Of the day. They have a timeout call from Coach Carey here, uh, but they set themselves up at the 41. They got some time, 2.11 to go. Stop the clock right there, 2.11. 2.11 to go. They have some weapons with Emmons and Teal and Roy and some others I'm sure I'm missing here. Uh, DMA comes in two and two, now right? On the year. Two and two. They have played off. I think they played. They played Sussex Central. Sussex Central was one of the other losses. Benny had that game, right? Yep, that's a yeah, two tough losses for DMA, and you want to say maybe two good losses in a way, because they lost to two very tough teams. An update from Abyssinia Stadium: It is seven nothing St. George's. Sally's goes four uh, four and out. They turn the ball over on downs. St. George's gets three long runs and touchdown. That's from uh, Jason Winchell who's hanging out at Abyssinia. That's where we'll be tomorrow. That's right. Nick will be down there in the Nick Alessandrini press box. I'm sorry, it's the Trez Lini <laughs> press box, right? Sure, well, Trez on the pregame as well Saturday. Here's a handoff to Emmons, trying to get him some space to the outside. How about the patience from Edward Emmons and turned in a gain of nothing into a gain of something. Yeah, he stayed in bounds. Which is okay because they have two timeouts left. But uh, you're sitting, he sat there and waited and waited, and he gets himself up to the 49 yard line to a gain of, I believe, eight. Eight carries for 64 yards today for Edward Emmons, who came into the season leading them in rushing. DMA at 500 yards and three touchdowns coming in. Trips to the top of the screen, a little bunch of trips for Odell Teal. Teal had Roy down the lone side, will pass up on it. Here come flags, and now he'll fire it into the dirt and we'll await the penalty. Yeah, my, my guess that's a holding territory. And as we talked about in our shows, uh, the DLS Weekly, Wednesdays at 7 from a Buffalo Wild Wings near you. Uh, no longer a spot foul. It's going to be a line of scrimmage foul, which makes things a lot easier for everybody. You see referees running around. They run to the 22-and-a-half-yard line and drop the flag or throw it 18 yards and hoping it lands in the right spot. <laughs> we saw a couple launches last week in that game. Some of these guys, they're, uh, who's that referee with the with the guns? Uh, <laughs> Ed Hockley? Ed Hockley, yeah. He retired, I believe, didn't he? His son's an ahead of fish. I, I think he did that. the game in London last Nick, week. Nick, you're getting a chair at halftime. No man. way. I just remembered that uh, my pants took a beating last time, so I got to <laughs> spread it out. out Second and 12 after the holding call. Watching a little soccer day, I stood up for the soccer game, and I'm you know, not as young as I used to be. <laughs> Motion for Malcolm Roy. And perfect coming. time blitz from Cole Finese. That one's up and a better pass to Emmons, who has the screen, and he is hit absolutely really hard. Well, that was pop-up video on that pass. That, At was, the 43. that was a lollipop way up in the air on the pass, but Teal was under some serious pressure. Yeah, that was a heck of a job by Teal to get that ball out of his hands and into the hands of his running back. It's Cole Finese, LeVar Arrington timed that snap and was right through the line of scrimmage. And now a timeout for DMA. That's their third and final timeout. Clock will stop with a minute 11. Third and seven coming up for DMA here at home. That's perfect, perfect timing by uh, Cole Finese on that one to get through. And uh, you got a lot of things going on. You can't, obviously you can't jump offside and you got to pick your spot where you're gonna go through the line and, and you got through and-, and Right through. They had a screen call, so it was the right call by Coach Carey. I think Teal 
with where Finis was, he had to throw the ball up in the air a little higher than he probably wanted to. Yeah, again, he gave impressive. Gave it off time to close in on Emmons. Impressive throw to get it off and land right into the hands of Emmons, but Archmere had 11 hats to the ball. Third down and seven for DMA. Trips to the top of the screen for Teal. Looking down the middle of the field, firing, and that one's intercepted by Miles Kemski at the 25. He's got some blockers. Some blockers in front of him. He's out to midfield, breaks a tackle and into DMA territory as he falls at the 42. And Nick, I believe they have two timeouts left. And that pass intercepted by number three. Miles Kemski had that lined up. I mean, he watched that ball from the moment it left Teal's hand, and, and he knew right where it was going. So they have 57 and a half, 58 seconds, two timeouts. They're on the DMA 43-yard line, and it's a good return. return That's 35-yard return there so by, by Kemski. Odell Teal was looking for the sophomore, Salim Frank, down the seam and just overshot him a bit and a little behind and wound up into the hands of the safety, Kemski, who's been great in coverage on the back end today for Archmere. And now here come the Auk offense. Last time we saw them, they punched it in on fourth down. And they take a stay of or took a 7-6 to six lead, and now they got it with 57 seconds to work with and a few timeouts. Update from Smyrna, it's 14-6 Middletown. And Middletown also intercepted a pass in the, uh, in a Smyrna pass in the end zone to thwart a touchdown. Double slot for Miles Kemski. First and 10 from the 43 with less than a minute to go here in the first half. Kemski to the left, firing behind his intended target, Gavin Lee, and it's broken up. Yeah, was it Lee who made that sliding catch the it last was, time? It was, absolutely. He behind him. Couldn't uh, do the old spinorama on that one quite enough. So second and 10 after the incompletion. Clock stopped now with 53 seconds to go. It all started with a 52-yard touchdown run courtesy of Edward Emmons, opened up the scoring for DMA. And then a six-yard touchdown catch a little while ago to Cole Finise. The extra point was added by Finise. And that gave the Hawks the lead, seven to six. Second and 10, double slot for Kemski. Looking deep. Going to fire towards Drew Duncan, and that one broken up by Malcolm Roy. And he might be looking for some offensive interference on that play, but nothing called. And that's both of those number ones going at it, and both of those number ones, one of the, some of the better players on their respected teams, and that's a matchup coming in we were looking at. And Malcolm Roy has got the better of that one here so far tonight. Malcolm Roy was like, like Kemski in his interception. He had it lined up. <coughs> uh, Drew Duncan just got in the way, and... Knocked the ball loose. A true ball hawk has Malcolm Roy, also the team's leading receiver. Haven't been able to get him the ball, at least offensively. Just that one catch that went for 20 yards was his only target back in the first quarter. So after that incompletion, third and 10 with 46 seconds to go. Trips to the top of the screen. Drew Duncan one-on-one -on -one with Roy to the bottom. Kemski looking for the under route. Steps up in the pocket. Now has room to run. He'll tuck it. Inside the 30, going to dive forward. Clock will stop now at the 28-yard line. Just until they get it set, but Archer does First have the two timeouts. And that's a 15-yard carry uh, for Kemski. The whistle is just to get those chains set. Uh, Coach Blaise has those two timeouts in his pocket. That's a good job, but there's one I think you're probably going to use it. Um, that's a great play. That was a third down six. rush, I believe, right? It was. Third and, was it third and eight? Third and... 10, I believe, two incompletions. Yeah, that's correct. So he went from the 43 as a 15 yard 15 rush. yarder. He's got four carries now for 35 yards, does Kemski. He is five of 10 for 42 yards and a touchdown. See, Nick, I got to take notes or else I have to rewatch the entire game. <laughs> I've done that. Been I there. work at 4 a.m. tomorrow, so that will not be happening tonight. That's right. I'll be up early as well. Changing Getting diapers. Getting everything ready. Oh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Getting everything ready for a nice day at the tub. Parents and family weekend yeah. tomorrow at Delaware. Sold out crowd. Are your parents coming? <laughs> My parents are not coming. <laughs> Going to be fun to mix it up there before the game. And again, remember if you're out tailgating, Capriati's gift card to one of the tailgate parties out tomorrow in front of tomorrow's game. So tweet at Blue Hens Radio. If you're uh, out there with your family, your friends getting ready for the game, and you can have a $150 gift card to Capriati's. Really? What time does that start? <laughs> <laughs> you're out there early. I'll be out there looking. I, 
I'll be at work in the morning and then uh, heading over to watch some football. Seven to six now, first and 10 after the run by Kemsky. Here from the DMA, 28 now for Archmere. Trips to the bottom. Kemsky tried to step up in the pocket and he's wrapped up in sack. Well, you can either spike the ball, but I think I heard the whistles for a timeout. And the clock is, I think a timeout was called. They lost a couple seconds. That was that, but uh, it's going to be 26.1. Chris Tremble on the sack, number 11 from DMA, wrapping him up and bringing him down for a loss. And clock stopped, as Mike mentioned. Final timeout for Archmere, 26 seconds to go. Loss of about three yards there. And for you look now at second and 13, but you're more concerned with the clock, which they had a few seconds back, 32 okay, seconds yeah. here for Archmere. Um. I think they're going to have to take a couple shots. And, you know, getting, if you throw the ball in bounds, you either have to rush and spike it right away because they're out of timeouts. Uh, or you just go to the end zone or run something along the sidelines where you can get out of bounds and stop the clock. And yeah, look for them to take a shot here. Hey, look, man. John Blaise has a state championship to his credit, and I don't. Undefeated season. That's right. And uh, so, obviously, John and his assistants know what they're doing. And Matt Carey, first year here at DMA. Came over from McCain, had McCain really going in the right direction. Uh, has a little more as far as resources to work with here. At the, it's a great, great opportunity. The facilities are great. You know, he's got a big roster. So he has the team playing well. Yeah, he does. You can't fault him for uh, for wanting to to test test the water here at DMA. Yeah. Same school district. Too, right? And again, right, you never know how the first year is going to be under you know your new head coach in his first season. But DMA off to a good start, playing good football through the first four weeks. Second and 12 now for Another the Ox and some that, motion for Hagenberg. That just looked funny again. When you see There's number 10 go in motion, but it's, this time it's actually a full start. So that'll back up five more and going to make it a little bit more difficult as we wind down the first half. they got to fix that at halftime. That's at least five, uh, either motion or false starts or procedure calls. Yeah, I believe the six. Dead ball fouls are just, you know, it's hurting. Sixth or seventh penalty in the first half for Archmere. Coach Belay's not going to like that stat. Second and 17. Motion again for Hagenberg. Kemsky looking, I believe, for Gavin Lee down the sideline. Has him. Touchdown. How about that play? That throw was right on the money. 35-yard touchdown to Gavin Lee. And Archmere strikes Lane in the first half to extend this lead. And Miles Kemsky perfect, with a perfect, perfect throw over throw. the top to Gavin Lee. That couldn't have been any, and he was well covered, Nick. He just, the ball was tucked perfectly right into Lee's uh, bread basket, and he was right down that sideline and never broke stride. So they didn't need, uh, what, 30 seconds or so off the clock to, uh, to get it done. They did use their timeout smartly. And now they're looking for Cole Finney's extra point. Heck of a drive by Archmere. The kick is up, and it is through. 14-6 to six with 25 seconds to go in the first half. And Archmere looking to come on the road and spoil Seahawk homecoming here at DMA. And you talked about the turnover and then the offense coming back out onto the field here for Archmere. And they go down the field and score. That was just a fantastic play. Will be at uh, and again, I apologize on the initial call there. I was, I thought it was Gavin Lee. It wasn't 100 percent positive, but who was it? It was Gavin oh, Lee, so, so it was good. So I got it right, but a huge touchdown for Archmere. They have 25 seconds. In. Now, Archmere, you can't just think they're out of timeouts. Let's just get this done with. You got to play defense here. And if you're DMA, a lot of ball. 6 of 11, 77 yards, and now two touchdowns for Kemsky. He's also got four carries for 35 yards. And I'll tell you, he's a grinder. Yeah. And yeah, he's a good player and a good leader for this Archmere team. And a little squib kick from Finise. That's going to probably go out of bounds. And a flag will come out. So you know what that means? They're going to get it at the 40, I believe. And I have a feeling Odell Teal might going to put the ball in the air here for DMA. He's we'll also, find out. He's a run threat, so maybe an option type play here. We'll see. So 25 seconds to go, and I believe they have what, one timeout left, Mike? No, I know they're out. They're, they're out. Timeouts. So they're out of timeouts. We'll see if they even decide to to do something with it here offensively. Well, you know, there's, there's players out there like Coach. Let us let's take a shot. Let's take a shot. Archmere just did. Football coaches they tend to be a little more on the conservative side. 
speaking of uh, we have a procedure call on Archer, that was because the kick went out of bounds. Speaking of uh, football coaches in Delaware, I was watching a little Sam Houston State last night. Casey Keeler, first year in uh, FBS, FBS, right? FBS, yeah. these are their own five, the Bearcats with a K. Can be tough that first year, that's for sure. It's going to take All at least a little bit of time. KC is, the man knows how to recruit. Yeah. Great with the transfers as well. That's oh, yeah. where he made his living. Yep. Quarterbacks, you were, you were second string somewhere. I got a home <laughs> for you in Glassboro, New Jersey, and then Newark, Delaware. 25 seconds to go. First and 10. DMA to start this one from their own 35. They'll just hand it off to Emmons, and he's wrapped up in the backfield. And they can't stop the clock, so. No gain for number eight, eight and Evans. that could do so it he's here. Hurt. He's hurt. They're going to stop the clock with 10 seconds to go, and we don't want to see this. No, Emmons, a, a, such a big part of this DMA team. He's just running the clock out. Sometimes that's why you just kneel on the ball to prevent that kind of thing. Plus, uh, there's a risk of a fumble uh, when you run the ball. Well, we've had, I uh, hope Ed Emmons is, is okay. Uh, we'll take a look at it. Trainers are down with him on the field at the 35-yard line. Middletown, 14. Smyrna, 6. We'll get you some other scores here before the half. We will. Looks like they're going to be able to help him up here. And with some aid, he's going to get off to the sideline. He's lifting up that right foot. So maybe looks like a right ankle injury. Don't want to speculate, but something to do with that right leg of Edward Emmons. Who already has a touchdown, the lone touchdown today so far in the first half for the Seahawks. He's going to need a little help being carried off to the sideline. And we really hope he's okay. Such a talented player All right, some for the Seahawks. Scores here, Nick. Uh, Sussex Tech 14-6 over Lake Forest. Hodgson 14, Cesar Rodney 0. Cape Penlope in 16, St. Mark's 14. That's a uh, little bit of a surprise. Sussex Central 17-7 over Apo. 21-0 Odessa over Conrad. This is Teal back by Teal firing, has Malcolm Roy who makes the catch at the 50. Malcolm Roy dangerous in open space, but gonna have no time to work with after this one. He'll be stopped with, I believe, momentum at the 45 yard line. It's Lazian 13, St. George's seven. So a gain of 19 on the final completion. Halftime score, 14-6 So at the half, the late Archmere touchdown, a 35-yard pass from Kemsky to Gavin Lee gives the Onks a 14-6, one-possession lead over the Seahawks here at homecoming at Fusco Memorial Stadium. We're going to take a break at the half. When we come back, we'll get you stats from half number one, some info and some scores from around the state, and everything you need to know ahead of second-half action here on Middleboro Road. It's Archmere and DMA of the Onks leading the Seahawks 14-6. We'll be right back with second-half action right here on Delaware Live Sports. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine list, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the Raw Bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. See you soon. Wraps, signs, banners, and promotional items that can help your business stand out from the rest. Looking for an excellent way to convey a professional image? Customized promotional products are the perfect way to target new customers, increase employee retention, and boost your brand awareness. Let the professionals at Cassidy Graphics bring your advertising ideas to life. Give them a call today at 302-326-2412. Again, that number is 302-326-2412. Again, Cassidy Graphics brings your advertising ideas to life. First State Orthopedic Statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. We serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com.
I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation. And five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the villages of Five Points open seven days a week, best happy hour around. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott Kammerer, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Sodell Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Settle Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Surf Bagel has served the community in Delaware for over 20 years, providing fresh hot bagels, breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches, wraps, salads, local coffee and smoothies, and our iconic merch. Welcome to Surf Bagel. We're stoked to serve you. Welcome to Surf Bagel! Hi, I'm Scott Kammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home.
Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302-239-4822. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSP.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? How you doing? My name's Mike Cassidy. I'm the founder and president of Cassidy Painting. I started back in 1984, incorporated in 1986. I never had the word no in my vocabulary. Uh, when someone called me to do a job, I always said yes. Whether it was a struggle, whether it was seven days a week, uh, sun up to sundown, it, it didn't matter. And with that philosophy, we were able to grow to the size we are. We employ close to 80 uh, individuals. We really enjoy being in the family business. Um, I look forward to coming to work every day. And it's so nice to work with the people that we work with in the office. Uh, we've really become a family with them. We really create a family experience around here. And Cassidy Painting is a very diversified company. We don't say no to anything. We deal with everything from epoxy floors to painting buildings to uh, spray foam insulation, spray fireproofing. If it deals with a coating, we can handle it. So when our customers call and they're under the gun and they know the need to get a job done, they know who to call because we perform. We've always been performed. We've never been replaced out of 37 years of business. For any of your painting needs, we can handle it. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Thompson Island Brewing Company in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Come check us out. Located in the Rehoboth Gateway next to Blue Coast Rehoboth, Thompson Island will follow the Sodell tradition of serving beautiful, simple food that will pair perfectly with our fresh homemade beer. Thompson Island is a perfect place to have dinner with your family, enjoy happy hour with friends at the bar, or spend a day in the beer garden playing bocce ball and ping pong. Thompson Island Brewing Company in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, open seven days a week. See you soon. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here, and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets, and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware. Come check us out. Matt's Fish Camp features seafood classics, coastal comfort food, and chef-driven specials that pair perfectly with our large selection of craft ales, curated wine list, and camp cocktails. Matt's offers indoor and outdoor dining and is the perfect place to have dinner with your family, happy hour with friends, or enjoy lunch at the Raw Bar. Matt's Fish Camp in Fenwick Island, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round. 
See you soon. Wraps, signs, banners, and promotional items that can help your business stand out from the rest. Looking for an excellent way to convey a professional image? Customized promotional products are the perfect way to target new customers, increase employee retention, and boost your brand awareness. Let the professionals at Cassidy Graphics bring your advertising ideas to life. Give them a call today at 302-326-2412. Again, that number is 302-326-2412. Again, Casty Graphics brings your advertising ideas to life. First State Orthopedic Statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. We serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation. And five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lois in the villages of Five Points open seven days a week, best happy hour around. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott Kammerer, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Sodell Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Soto Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Welcome to Surf Bagel. Surf Bagel has served the community in Delaware for over 20 years, providing fresh hot bagels, breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches, wraps, salads, local coffee and smoothies, and our iconic merch. Welcome to Surf Bagel. We're stoked to serve you. Welcome to Surf Bagel! Welcome to Surf Bagel!
And welcome back inside Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison Journey alongside Mike Lang and Nick Halliday making his way back up top on the press box to provide that beautiful crystal clear picture for everyone at home. Mike, we've got a good one tonight. DMA homecoming. The Seahawks welcoming you in the Archmere Ox, a semifinal matchup from a few years ago, one that came down to the wire. That was a few good matchups from that year that these two teams played, and now they are going back at it here tonight in a 14-6 ball game. Let's get everybody some of the stats from half and number one. DMA got on the board first back in quarter number one, a 52-yard touchdown run for Edward Emmons. He had seven carries for 64 yards and a touchdown. Hurt that right leg. Looked like a lower leg, maybe a right ankle injury. Don't like to speculate on the last play of the first half. So we'll see if we see number eight in blue for DMA here in half number two. We hope he's okay and we hope to see him here shortly. Odell Teal had five carries for 26 yards. He completed four passes on nine attempts for 62 yards and an interception. Miles Kemsky for Archmere Mike had a pretty good first half. He went six of 11 for 77 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for 35 yards on four carries. Those are the big stats there. The touchdowns for Archmere, a six yard catch for Cole Finese from Kemsky and then a 35 yard touchdown for Gavin Lee as time expiring late in that first half. I believe the touchdown with about 25 seconds left to go in the half, gave Archmere that one possession lead, 14 to six. Mike, what stood out to you in, in half number one? Well, for Archmere, Nick, when they needed yards, for the most part, they got them. Um, I, I think they were expecting three more minutes on the clock, and now we're watching the team's time. Uh, uh, DMA, DMA came, came out, out late. Up, came, came out late. late. Archmere's been ready to go with their know. return Archmere's team. Archmere's got the return team out there. DMA's got 50 guys on the field. So the officials... So something's got to give Anyway, what here. stood out to me for Archmere was Kemsky running the offense efficiently, getting the yards that he needed, especially late in that half, Nick. I think early on they were they were forcing some punts. They kind of turned that around in, later in the half. You know, they, they needed 12, they got 12. They needed 10, they got 10. And then that, that beautiful touchdown pass to Gavin Lee was just great while we wait to see. You now here comes, I think the referees were like, hey, you guys had 20 minutes, man. You're off. Um, you know, for DMA, they hit the home run early with, with Emmons. And they kind of got away from that. You know, they, they were throwing the ball. We talked a little bit about it off the air at halftime. Yeah. We'll see if they get you – know, Emmons, we'll, we don't know what kind of shape That's he's right. in. They do have other runners. And uh, Roy was in the homecoming court at halftime. That's right. Shout so out might to be Josh on, he Roy. He might be on a high or something, you know. And if I miss somebody else, I apologize. There were yeah. a couple of kids on that. Anyway, Archer's going to get the ball start that. But I thought DMA got away from the big play. And we'll see if they go back to that here in the third quarter. I'm checking up and down that DMA sideline. No looks – of number number six, eight, eight at the moment. We'll wait and see if we Not see him. And now already an offside. would be fitting just to start <laughs> off the second half with a few flags. We had our fair share back in half well, number that's one. That's clearly an offside. The referee threw it at the line of scrimmage where the T was. And if you're a coach, you know, I played, I didn't play high-level football, but I played football, you know, even when I played in CYO football, the referee, you know, your coach is tight. You're standing on the line. You can't cross the line until the kicker gets there. Also trying to get a head start down the field. It's going to cost them five, and they're going to kick from the 35. In the third quarter in Middletown, Nick, 14 to six. I'm sorry, in Smyrna, 14 to six. Middletown down there in the Harvest Bowl. Identical score to here, as a matter of fact. Yeah, just getting off underway. We both got underway at the same time, but we'll have take two for us. Yeah. Here in our northern game of the week on the homecoming, here at Delaware Military. Academy. Tried to we get you should a be set. Scores earlier, but we'll get you some more. As That's we go right. Along. Yeah, we'll get you some of those updates after the kickoff. Here we go. It's booted away. That's a live football. Hagenberg going to run and corral it at the 15. Trying to make something happen. Nice move inside. Gets to the 25 and falls forward to about the 29 yard line. Archmere offense out first here in half number two. Mike, any. Not a bad job since he slid at the ball. If he had slid and hit the ball, well, it's a fumble. If he had slid on the ball, they'd be down at the 20 yard line. So. That's not a bad job there by uh, Archer to get the ball. That's a heck of a catch. Um, on the sideline there. First and 10, Archer from the 29. So first and 10 from the 29 in our first action of half number two. Kemsky, two touchdown passes in the first half for the Hawks, and they'll open it up with a slot to the right. Pistol formation for Kemsky. They'll turn, handoff up the middle, yeah, nothing nope, doing. Nope. He runs into a brick wall, that is Kale Denegris. <laughs> Kale's excited, and he should be. He, uh, yeah, I think he lost about three no or four yards, and no, it's no gain. It should have been a loss of yards, but Kale was right there. No gain for Pete Blessington. Four carries for seven yards 
for number 19 in white for the Hawks here tonight. A loss actually going to go for a loss of two that okay. time. Yeah, PJ having a tough time getting started against this big EMA line. Blasington leading rusher on the season for Archmere. Slot to the right for Kemsky. This time play action. Fires across the middle. Has Brendan Burke who makes the catch out near the first down marker. I heard some whistles. I believe that is enough. And that's going to be a 13-yard gain and a first down. It's a good job there by uh, Kemsky. Hits the uh, kind of a sliding. Uh, who caught that ball? Uh, Burke? Brendan Burke. Two catches, 18 yards now for Brendan Burke. And a first down for the Archmere offense that has been able to get it going here. After that struggle in quarter number one. And now first and 10 from their own 40. Slot to the left, Finise is in the slot. I believe Blessington to the left of Kemsky, and now a whistle. Have a stoppage play. And once again, an early timeout, this time for Archmere to start the third quarter. 10.41 to go. That'll stop things. First and 10 for Archmere at their own 40 when we come back. We'll leave the camera on. You can check out the field. We'll be right back shortly after the break. 14 to six. Archmere out in front of DMA here on Middleborough Road. And we're back here. A little quick pitch to Cole Finise, the motion man, who's trying to get to the outside behind Blessington following his lead blocker. And a good gain for Cole Finise on first down. We'll call it five. So he's going to get five on that. That's really, uh, may not look like much, but five yards you'll take every time. And again, we had Cole and Kemsky and a couple of those guys from Archmere on the show last week ahead of their big-time matchup with Carabelle. Tough schedule for the Hawks to open up. TMA playing some good teams, too, as well through the first four weeks. Yeah, and you know, Nick, if I had didn't have five things going on here, I'd tell you, we're, <laughs> I think we're at Christiana this week for our show on Wednesday. I hope so. That's a little closer and for so, me. Yeah, well, Dover was a, <laughs> a bit of a hike. And we got Rehoboth coming up. That's right. Motion, deep motion. They fake to pitch to Finise. Kemp's oh. going to keep it, and he's hit hard, but able to lower the boom himself. But, of course, getting up off of the tackle, Josh Roy. Yeah, he only got a yard out of that, and it was some pain involved. Up the middle for Gina one. By Josh Roy continues to be all over the field, including, as Mike mentioned, on the homecoming court That's right. there at halftime. Maybe that's why they needed an extra long halftime. Yeah. They had four or five guys in the homecoming court. That's true. And then you got to run to the locker room, and then they send you back out on the field. I'm telling you, missing that halftime speech for something like that, coaches aren't, aren't too uh, fond of it sometimes. That's but correct. you got to get your stuff done, right? you know, got to get your homecoming court football, stuff done. Exactly court. right. Kemsky lofting up, looking for his intended target was Finise down the sideline, I believe out of the slot, a little up and, up and uh, out and up down the sideline. Falls incomplete on third down. That'll set up fourth down. Yeah, that pass has kind of got away from Miles, and uh, he'd probably like to have that one back. But you're looking at a fourth and five or so, and it looks like, if you know, Finise, I think I'd be – punting down here. Or is it fourth or third down? Fourth and four. Fourth. Okay, Finis is back. Finis will come back out on the field to pump this one away. Back to receive the dangerous Malcolm Roy. His heel sitting at the 10 yard yeah, I might, line. I'm going to kick elsewhere. And is this a DMA timeout? That's a funny place. To, uh, did Archmer call the second one already? Nope, it's a DMA. DMA timeout. We'll take it with him. 9-11. To go here in the third quarter. Timeout DMA. They've got two left. It's 14 to 6. Archmere in front. Punt unit on for the Ox when we come back.
Nick Alessandrini alongside Mike Lang and Nick Halliday of North Crew here at Fusco Memorial Stadium in technically Wilmington, Delaware here for the home of the Delaware Military Academy Seahawks. Homecoming on a Friday night between them and the visiting Archmere Ox, 14-6. Archmere leading as Finise boots this one away. It's a high one, and he had the same idea as you, Mike. Not going to give Malcolm Roy an opportunity. Oh, look at this, though. And I'll tell you, Cole Finise may be the best punter in the state. That rolls to about the five-yard line, and Cole Finise going to pin DMA deep as they start their first drive of half number two. What a punt by Finise. It just died. He's not a whole lot behind the line and maybe he's not way back there he's got to get that ball off quickly he got that one up in the air kind of way up and he man knows what he's doing so the DMA offense we'll see him for the first time here in the second half 858 to go here in the third quarter and they're going to start this one deep at their own six slot to the left they are back 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 Maynard and Roy are the two receivers to the near sideline. They'll look to throw it. They get a screen out to Maynard. Maynard trying to follow Malcolm Roy up the sideline in the completion. Going to give them a little breathing room. I think, I think Blessington was able to shove him out of bounds. Yeah, a gain of about five on the completion. Well, we said it earlier, you know, five yards, that's not a bad, uh, a bad game. He'll take that. Maynard's first catch of the evening, having a good year on the season, 67 yards on four catches and just two games played. So second and six after the completion. Well, second and five, they changed it on. Faking the handoff, now here's Teal who just goes through the hole very quickly and he'll have enough for a first down on the carry. Number 73 and 60 on the tackles, Jack Chessman and Francis Morta. And that's a Seahawks first down. And be enough for a Seahawk first down. I believe a gain of 10 for Teal. Six carries for 36 yards. Now for the sophomore quarterback. Teal coming in at six foot 195. I formation for him this time is he's under center. Just a sophomore. Play action for him. Looking down the middle of the field and in and out of the hands yeah, it was of Mater. A hair, just a hair. And a, at that point, you know, Mater's thinking, well, i got to make sure Archer doesn't catch this ball. There were two Hawks or maybe three back there in coverage. Still had an opportunity. Haul it in was Mater, but it falls incomplete. As Mike mentioned, just a tad bit underthrown by Teal. And it falls to the ground incomplete, second and ten. Not a bad call, though. I think on, you know, going for the home run on first down, uh, when you have some explosive I like guys. Call, yeah. yeah, why not? You know, you can't do it every series, but it's a, you throw it in there once in a while, no problems with that. Back under center on second down. They'll turn and toss it out to Josh Cox. Cox trying to get to the side, excuse me, Josh Roy trying to get to the sideline. Josh Cox and Archimere Auk. I apologize. Now, the problem Short here game. for DMA is that Archer played that really well. He got about three. But you're looking at a third and... Oh, actually, they're about, actually, they only got about one. Looking at a third and... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Third and about six. So he did get four yards. I think it was more like six yards than... There we go. So picks up four. Yeah, so we got more, a little more yardage than we could see from up here. But your arch you got yeah, you got you got a hold. And again, no sign of Edward Emmons here in the third quarter. Josh Roy at the fullback and a takeover, it looks like, as the tailback here the rest of the way. Or at least for the time being. Third and six from the 32. Play action for Teal. Teal has room, gonna get out out of the pocket, hit hard. I think he's a little short, but it's close. And able to scramble, pick up a few yards, and that's going to make this fourth down close. And it's going to be fourth and about a yard. And we'll see what DMA decides to do. They're in their own territory at around the 30, and they've 31 yard line. Both teams have used one timeout already. So. so fourth and one. They're not showing any indication of punting here. No, and Tio, when he got a six foot, 195 pound quarterback. 
And a, and a line that size? And a line <laughs> led by Kale Denigris. You might be able to get that little push up front. We'll see what Coach Matt Carey and the offense come up with here on fourth and one. 6.23 and ticking second, or excuse me, third quarter. 14 to six lead for Archmere. Here we go, Teal gonna be under center, one back deep behind him, it's Roy. And now some movement. And I'm sure it's gonna be a timeout. I think Carey called a timeout. I don't see any flags down. Yeah, it looks like it will be a stoppage. That's going to be the second that's timeout the for DMA. Two timeouts and you're not even six minutes into the quarter. That six oh nine. We'll stay right here for this one, Mike. It looked as if though Teal was ready to run the quarterback sneak, at least from my vantage point. That's what it looked like, fourth and one. But Coach Gary obviously saw something that he didn't like, so they'll call a timeout. Their second of the half that leaves them with one the rest of the way. Six oh nine remaining here in the third quarter. Again, thanks for joining us here on a Friday night on Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison, Drini. Mike Lang and Nick Halliday. Some other great games up and down the state today. The Harvest Bowl going on. It's our first orthopedics game of the week down at Smyrna. 14-6, Middletown leading Smyrna. So Middletown, the number one ranked team in Class 3A. Smyrna coming in at number four. But, of course, those two teams, always a battle when they get together. All right, Nick, a rematch is, of the state championship We game. will be at Christiana this Wednesday with our guests scheduled to be Newark and Howard football. And so that game was moved what? to Thursday. We're going to have Newark and Howard football on That's Thursday right. night now at Abyssinia Stadium. Uh, Friday and Thursday also Milford and Woodbridge. Friday it's Cape and Sussex with Benny and Henny. And then Saturday, Saturday, Smyrna at CR with Glenn Frazier and Pat Gary. And Fourth and one, quarterback power for Odell Teal. And, and he's going to run over and knock on his way to a new set of downs. So they set it up and run it like the Florida Gators of 2008. And Odell Teal picks up five and a first down for DMA. Eight carries, 46 yards now for the sophomore quarterback. Yeah, he's getting some yards, but, you know, Archer has done a good job not letting him really break on here. They did obviously had that 52-yard run from Emmons, uh, but they've done a good job on, on Odell. But he's so dangerous now. Any play, he could just he could cover the rest of the field, and that snap is a little low. Screen to Mayner. Mayner trying to make a defender miss, and he's going to be wrapped up and right. taken Guess. down. Great open field right, tackle by Michael Donovan. Donovan got out there and got him, and uh, made sure he did not get out of his Gain grip. One of the play, by All right, Nick, 12, let me fix this clock because I told you that's not my, my strong point. Five fourteen and ticking here at Fusco Memorial Stadium between the Seahawks and the Ox. 14 to 6. The only Second touchdown for DMA for came that first quarter. A 53 yard touchdown for Edward Emmons, who looks to be out the rest of the way with that lower right leg injury. Yeah, you said you don't see him on the bench. No, not even without pads or anything, pad, yeah. at least to our knowledge. So, again, hoping he's okay. Teal fakes the handoff, looking to take it himself. And it. Such a hard guy to bring down. Oh, right on second and nine, gets so. about six yards. Good job. Looks three, like they're going to give it third and four here. And Jack did a good job picking that off the turf, the turf, and then uh, it was a straight run the right up the middle and slipped out of a couple tackles. And correct me if I'm wrong, last year, Mike, it was a, a lean, right? Was he at DMA last year or was that yes. two years or so? And him and he, Teal, was here, well, he was here last year and yeah. two years ago. And him and Teal battling out, and lean was the quarterback when they faced Archmere that undefeated season a couple years back when they had such a great year. And now doing big things at Salesian. I mean, Odell Teal stepping in as a sophomore to lead the Seahawks. Yeah, it was a, that, that, oh, I think there was some movement. And some movement up front. That's going to be most likely a no. full start. Every There's official is going to launch the flag. You know, not we don't. You know, uh, it's always nice to walk down memory lane. You don't want to live there, but you're, that saw that semifinal game it was a uh, great one. That one of my favorite high school football games I've I've ever been a part of, and I wasn't really a part of it. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, we did broadcast it, so we were we a part of it. it. I was down on the field for for most of it, and it was uh, it, it was it was warm out. <laughs> it was just beautiful. The weather was perfect. Beautiful. Fall weather. Yeah. The game was great. It was and, just and a lot again, of fun. Such a great game, and again, a huge penalty late in that game. And These teams have really they developed such a rivalry over the years, and and obviously it's based in respect and you know. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, two, two programs. great programs. Five yard penalty. That really hurts in here. We make they have. You know, they've, they've had some big plays, but they've really gone with that four and five yard run. And that would leave them with a fourth down. So let's see what, what uh, Coach Carey dials up here. Second and eight. 
Third and eight firing, looking for Oof. Roy, overshot him. That one was in and out of the so hands. Close. Well, was that not on him? Jack real, Bradley. Jack Bradley, my apologies there, uh, Jack. Brings up fourth down. And that's going to bring up fourth down here for the Seahawks. I think I just erased our clock. Well, right now, 324, stop for the moment. Punt team on for DMA. There we go. Nobody should have me doing this. <laughs> Back to receive will be Ryan Hagenberg at the 32-yard line. Good snap. It's a high kick and a good one. Hagenberg going to call poison. And then the ball ends up winding up in his hands. He muffed it. Why? And then able to get back into it. I don't think he was expecting it to Why? take that hop right into gonna, his if hands. you're going to call poison, run out of there. Just get away. You're just giving the other team an opportunity. It just, why, why, why? He was able to hop back on it, though, Fort Archmere. Now the Ox will come back out at the 30-yard line. I see that so many times. I'm thinking, like, you have already did the fair catch. If you're not going to catch it, and then Vamoose. <laughs> Great coverage by the Seahawks that time. Almost able to hop right on it. And now the Archmere offense back out. Of course, led by Kemsky. Gavin Lee, the receiver now to the top. Drew Duncan and Hagenberg here in the slot to the bottom of the formation. Finise Whoa. is that flanker man. <laughs> Flash photography Flash here. Flash photography here at homecoming night. Hand off up the middle to Finise, and he's wrapped up. Kale DeNegris, of course. One of the first to get there, Kale's and right behind him is Josh Roy. Kale's having himself quite an evening, isn't he? He's, he's been on a bunch of tackles. Along with, uh, was that Trumbull, Trumbull was in there, of course. Those have been the three names defensively wait, wait, that have been all over the field. Trumbull's number is 11. 11, okay, he said number one. I was like, this is, is this a college roster with two number ones? <laughs> Malcolm Roy, of course, number one for the Seahawks. He's been great at corner, been battling with Drew Duncan tonight, and he'll meet that matchup once again here. Once again, trips to the bottom. Lee, the lone receiver to the top, and a back to the right. I believe blessing to Kemsky. And Sean Blitz on here, here it comes. Looking for Gavin Lee, trying to get it out in front to him, but good coverage on the back end for DMA, and that one sails incomplete, just overthrew him that time was Kemsky. Well, so they knew where they were going with that ball right off the snap. They wanted to try to get Gavin Lee one-on-one -on, -one on the back side, and the safety was right there anyway, so good coverage from DMA. You don't have a Pennsylvania license plate, do you? I do not. Okay. So I'm okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Actually, for the time being. In my car, if you lock the car, the headlights will shut off even if you leave them on, so... That's nice. And I, that, and my car that. is supposed to do the same thing, and uh, it's supposed to not to lock with your keys in it, but uh. unfortunately, <laughs> it's happened to me. I have to uh, shut it off with the headlights on. Counter to Finise back the other way. Has a little bit of running room. Lowers his shoulder and falls forward to the 44. Uh, and a gain of 13, a new set of downs for Archmere. Again, Archmere needs 10 to get 13. Finise now, nine, eight carries for 30 yards. For number 22, of course, the kicker, the punter, also plays slot receiver. That's he right. He can do it all. He's probably in the band, too. <laughs> so a big third down conversion for Archmere. Tough one for the DMA defense here now with 150 and ticking in the third. Trips again to the bottom here for Archmere. Kemsky going to hand off to P.J. Blessington. Ball comes out. It's loose. DMA's got it. A huge turnover forced by the Seahawk defense. And they're going to take over inside Archmere territory at the 49. A big change of momentum. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Blessington got hit. Ball came out. It wasn't able to hold on. and Just all blue jerseys around that ball. And that was an easy recovery there for the Seahawks. A big third down conversion for Archmere, and then the very next play on the handoff, a turnover. One of those mental or mistakes that Coach Belay said he can't have when he's going up against a team like DMA. You know, and Archmere's at one and three. They, they, they need wins. It's a good team, a lot of new players. Here's Teal on the quarterback, keeper up the middle. And such a hard runner. And he's going to pick up seven yards on first down. 
10 carries for 59 is now you're starting to see that wear and tear. Odell Teal wearing down this Archmere offense, starting to pick up a few more yards per carry here in the second half. Yeah, we mentioned that uh, most of the Archmere players go both ways. We're at the end of the third quarter here, and, um, you know, it's, it's not hot, fortunately, for Archmere. They're not dragging out there in, in, in a humidity, uh, humidity and, and 89 degrees. But you play every snap, and you're going to get tired. I don't care if you are 17 years old. Second and three after the seven-yard carry from Teal. Quick hitter up the middle to Josh Roy. I think he's got it. It's going to be close. They're going to spot him real close to that marker. And we'll see if they give it to him or not. Clock rolling wow, here right in the third. There. And they're going to give him a first down, a gain of three on the carry for Josh Roy. Four carries for 17 yards. As we're now seeing Salim Frink, he was the tailback on that last play. So no sign of Edmonds, but Frink going to get a little bit more run here as he heads to the sideline. Yeah, Coach Carey's got a lot of kids who can run the ball. Edmonds has been the featured back, but I've seen it's DMF, I've seen Frink run the ball. You know, Teal's always a threat to run the ball. Roy, they got guys who can run. Yes, they do. They've got some athletes. They've got some dangerous skill position players. First and 10 could be the final play of the third quarter from the Archmere 39. Teal, under, or Teal in the shotgun. They get it over to Josh Roy. Nice cut inside, but nowhere to go. And I'll tell you, both of these teams have done a great job at stopping the run. And that's going to be the final play of quarter number three. No gain on first down for Roy as we head to the fourth quarter. 14-6, Archmere leading by one possession. They lead by eight on the road during the Seahawk homecoming. But the momentum starting to shift. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action right here on Delaware Live Sports. that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. Back for the fourth quarter. About to get underway here on Delaware Live Sports. Nick Allison, Drini, Mike Lang, and Nick Halliday. Homecoming here at the site of DMA, Fusco Memorial Field. Fire across the middle. Teal has Malcolm Roy who makes the catch and breaks the tackle. And slung down at the 15 and a big play to start the first quarter. A gain of 24. Well, he had Roy going and uh, that passed right on the money. And they're down at the 15. That was a, uh, a big game for them. Three catches, 63 yards now for Malcolm Roy. Teal's thrown for 91. He's got 68 of them. First and 10 for DMA. The handoff up the middle to Josh Roy. He breaks a tackle. Keeps the legs churning and picks up four yards. And the marching band back in the nick of time. To put them at the at the 11 yard line there. You know, the, the, I think the first did the first touchdown come off with turnover as well. Was that off that first Archer fumble? I believe it was. Or the a turnover on downs and no, they, we can't wait for the turnover on downs. The fumble did not cost Archer the first time. Fake run to the left. Heel now going to go to the right Ooh. side, and he's hit hard. Wow, what a hit. Near the five-yard line. He might have lost his footing a tad there as he was going oh, down. Made the hit bounds. look maybe a little bit worse than it was. The clock is running. I thought they went out of bounds. Yeah, he was hit in bounds, but I'll tell you, what a, what a warrior Odell Teal is. He gets up like nothing happened. The big fella and quarterback picks up five on that carry. Let me restart the clock then. He... From the six-yard line. 11 for 64 wow, for Odell Teal. I don't know who hit him, because I'm looking through two panes of glass, but... He took a pop there. Yeah, I think it was Bradley or Michael Donovan, actually. Donovan, I believe, with the hit there. Now third 
and one can still get a first down. Can DMA and Teal going to quarterback sneak it up the middle, and that's exactly what he'll do. He'll have enough. And now first and goal to go inside the five for DMA. Well, we've had ourselves quite a game here. Not a lot of uh, offensive fireworks, but the game's close. That's always what we're looking for. That's right. We've, we've had, had some battles enough. the last couple weeks, Mike. We've had some good ones. So after the carry, picking up two on the sneak did Teal, and now first and goal to go inside the five for the Seahawks. 9.53 and ticking in a 14-6 game, a one-possession game, DMA. Trying to get this thing in. Haven't scored since the opening quarter. And looking to get this crowd into it at a homecoming Friday. Deep motion. They'll fake the handoff. Come back. It's Teal up the middle. And he's going to be dragged down at the one-yard line. I wonder if that was a broken play at all. Look, this looks a little off. Obviously, he made something out of it. But uh, it just looked like he was ready to hand off to somebody and just wasn't there. But he picks up four. So not. No harm, no foul there, right? 13 carries, 70 yards for Teal, who's also thrown for 91. And now second and goal from now, the one-yard line. They do trail by eight because they missed the extra point because of the penalty. And they'll have to go for two. Unless they figure, you know, we got time. Do they only have one timeout left? I believe so. Or No, two. Archmere. Archmere two as one. well. Yeah. Goal to go. Teal going to try to sneak it in. He's getting the push from behind. He should have been in. Let's wait the call. They are not giving it to him, it looks like. Thought he was in from here. Again, we have a tough view from it. DMA players holding their hands in the air, signaling for a touchdown. But we've got no word at all. That clock just a ticking, ticking, ticking. And now there's just a big pile of humanity. Down there. Everybody is waiting for some type of, and the clock of call here. And now Odell Teal, I believe, has his helmet off and is well, getting have, into it. He'd have to come out of the game. He was yelling at somebody down at the line of scrimmage. Helmet off, and he has been at the clock has been frustrated. You can't take your helmet off. You've got to come out of the game. And they're going to mark him down. So DMA not happy. That was a weird series of events there. And now you hear the crowd. They're going to you know, the let them hear about it. But again, we couldn't see where he was stopped, but they were kind of just looking at each other. It was kind of almost like a stoppage down inside the goal line. Either way, they're going to mark it down at the one-yard line. Now some arguing going over from DMA. I don't know if that's Malcolm Roy having a word with the officials. Did Teal come out of the game? He came out to get his helmet, and now the officials make him leave the ball well, game, cannot, it looks like. He can't stay in the game. Well, let's see. DMA might, was going to have to take a timeout here, I would think. Uh, we're going to have to set, figure out the clock situation. Ethan Brantley, the junior quarterback, and backup runs out onto the field, so they're going to keep it going. Play clock must the have just been reset. Going. And this is an interesting one. So now... That's like a minute and a half. Brantley's under center. Third and goal for DMA. Down a touchdown. The quick hitter up the middle to Josh Roy. And he's in for the touchdown. That was one of the weirdest one-yard plays ever. A weird last minute and a half, but it's capped off by a Josh Roy. Touchdown up the middle. Good from one yard out. And now a 14-12 ball game. Mike and a big play here coming up for the two-point conversion. Yeah, I would imagine you're going to go for two. Even if you miss, you're still within, you know, a field goal of taking the lead. And uh, that was just a weird sequence of events there. Clock stop now at 7.14 here in the fourth quarter. 14-12 and a big two-point conversion upcoming as the Seahawks try to even it up on a homecoming Friday. We'll see if, uh, if Teal is back in. I would imagine... I would probably think he would keep the ball here. DMA trying to get the offense set. And here we go. Two-point conversion to tie the game. Teal in the shotgun. Roy to his right. He'll take the snap. He lost it. The oh. ball's loose, and he's hit hard, and that's going to be no good. Cole Finise oh, laying the boom, flag and then down. a late flag coming on. Now, either way, with the flag, it's going to be after the play, so that should stand... But we'll wait and find out unless it occurred during the play. It was we'll a late flag. Happened. Let's find out. I mean, if it's on DMA, Archer will decline. If it's... It's a face mask. Oh, man, that's uh, half the distance. And that's big. And DMA going to have another shot here, half the distance to the goal. And what was a broken play from the beginning, a bad snap led to the fumble how, from Teal. How do you have a face mask on that play? How does that happen? 
And a big one gives DMA take two. And now they'll need to convert it, trailing by two, a big play. I mean, unless Finis came in and, and or whoever was with him and, and just happened to grab the, or hit the mask. And there was another DMA player down, might have been off the ball, we don't know. Either way, Frank is the tailback, Roy the fullback here as Teal goes under center. Now it's going to be two-point conversion from the one-yard line. That's a lot different, isn't it? It is. Teal trying the hard count. He'll take the snap. Quick hitter up the middle to Roy. Did he get in? Crowd wants a call. Archmere says they stopped him. And they did. He's going to be Woo. short. And the crowd here at Fusco Memorial is stunned. They're not, not happy. <laughs> it's homecoming night, Nick, and they're not in the mood right now. Again, it, it, it's tough to see from where we're at. We couldn't tell if he was in or not. Find it hard to believe Roy couldn't get that yard. It was close, but the Archmere defensive line and linebackers led by Cole Finis leading the charge, and it had to be maybe separated by inches. Oh, I would think so. They're, all, they're lining up at the one. Did that whole last three minutes has just been completely weird. Um, the bottom line, DMA scored a touchdown, and they didn't get the extra points. That's 14-12. to 12 with 7.14 to go. Wow. And, uh, Archmere is, they're gonna have to put together a drive here. They, you know, they, they could chew out the rest of the clock, chew up the rest of the clock here with seven minutes. It would be a lot of work. Uh, oh. DMA with two timeouts. What a game here at Delaware Military Academy. A touchdown by Josh Roy, and then the two point conversion, no good the first time. A flag gives DMA a half the distance to the goal and another shot. And they go back to Josh Roy, the fullback, on a quick dive up the middle. And Archmere stops him at the goal line. So 14-12 to 12 after the missed two-point conversion. Still a big ball game with 7.15 to go. And this one's kicked to Hagenberg at the 15. Hagenberg trying to get to the sideline. Breaks a few tackles, splits the defenders, and he's brought down at the 30. Yeah, big thing is uh, the hold on to the ball. All right, a couple updates. Sussex Tech 21-14 over Lake. St. Mark 17, Cape 16. That's in the fourth quarter. <clears throat> Pardon me. Central 30, Jag, Apo Jags 19, uh, 19, 30 to 19. Woodbridge 24 8 over Laurel. 14 6, Middletown over Smyrna. 28 7, Hodgson over Caesar. How about the season Hodgson is having? They're having a I'll great tell you, season. we had a chance to check them out. They looked good against Caravel in that game. Slazian of St. George is tied at 13. They're in the third quarter. We'll get you a couple more uh, in due time. And now the big Seahawks. Game at Abbas City tonight too. How about that? One? Yeah, we got a good game here as well. Absolutely. Seahawks need a stop. I prefer ours. Hand off to Cole Finis, who's going to get to the sideline, lower his shoulder, and brought down after a gain of eight. So a good start to Archmere's drive here on the first carry to Cole Finis. Yeah, I would not expect to see much going up in the air here unless they need a first down. So they started this at the what the 29. And the marching band with the trip. Gain of seven on the first down carry for Cole Finise and Mike Sennett. We'll see what Coach Belize decides to do here because the DMA defense has been great against the run game. They have. 6.30 to go, second and three. Deep motion from Hagenberg, who comes back inside first with down. the carry. And more. And he picks up about five yards and a new set now for the Ox. I'm going to let the clock run here because I'm a few seconds behind He's the official the score. 6-18 and ticking now is that Seahawk defense going to either have to come up with a stop or force a turnover. And a new first down here for the Ox at their own 42-yard line. First and 10 from the 42. That's a good six-yard pickup by Hagenberg there. And uh, you know, we said at halftime, an archer needed yards. They've been able to get them. Uh, you know, and I'm sure Blaze would not want to go back on defense if he could help it. He would just run the ball and run right back to Claymont. Deep motion once again from Hagenberg. This time play action to Kemsky, who will keep it himself up the middle. And you see two hands on the football. <laughs> and he picks up seven yards. So start, things starting to open up in the run game here for Archmere in the fourth quarter. Again, they couldn't get much going through three quarters with that DMA defense. Now, I've been really impressed with the with DMA's defense. Now, Archmer had the, the big hit on the uh, on the touchdown pass, and uh, by uh, the run game, just, they've not really been able to get that moving too much, Nick, because of the, the size of that line uh, you know, for DMA. But they've had a few successful runs here. 
14 to 12 ball game, 5.08 and ticking. Second and three for Archmere. Back to Cole Finise. He's got enough, I think. And Finise shedding tacklers, and he's going to have another first down. Exactly three. They needed the three, and he got the three. This one, right? That's about right where we are, Nick, here on the 48 uh, yard line. And Cole Finise, the line of scrimmage right in front of us. He gets to the 47. 10 carries, 40 yards for Cole Finise. And it's a first down. First down and for Archmere. There goes the signal, and they will the wind the clock. 4.45 now in ticking, and now into DMA territory at the Seahawk 48. Go Archmere. And now the defense for, D for DMA going to have to step up. Archmere looking to keep running this clock. Hagenberg, deep motion, comes back. Another fake. It's Kemsky, who's wrapped up and slung down from behind, but propelled forward Kemsky for a gain three. of about four. Yeah, and they'll, they'll take four yards, right? Four, four, and four. That's first down. Kemsky now, seven carries for 47 yards. I think Archmere, they, they, hey, they don't, they don't need a 40-yard run. You know, they don't, they, so the, what their coaches tell them, Two hands on the ball. It's the most important day. That's two turnovers tonight. Uh, hold the hold on the ball and just, just follow your blocks and get what you can. And if you're DMA, you're trying to strip that football. You need that football. You need to force a turnover. Some motion, some movement. No whistle, no flag. The coach is jumping around over there on the Archmere side. They're going to wait until the back judge. There he goes. And there he goes. And Kemsky, a smart quarterback, will snap it. Hand off to Finise. Looking for somewhere to go. He's going to get to that next level. Wow, first down on the push. Legs are continuing to move for Cole Finise and a big carry and a new set of downs inside the 35. How about that play by Finise and the line? It was not just Cole Finise Absolutely right, Mike. Great point. He gets down to the 35. Gain of nine for Cole Finise. Clock's going to run here. Three, uh, I'm going to stop the clock here on my end here. They're going to wait. Obviously, they're going to run the clock when once this chains are set. There goes the back judge. And the clock should be moving now. And that's the official just uh, blew the whistle. The, uh, the white hat just blew the, blew the whistle, I think, because the clock has stopped. He's winding the clock. Start the clock. Not now. As they were resetting something. And now they'll bring the huddle back to the 45. And now the clock is running. So, yeah, I guess another interesting stoppage there for the moment. Yeah, the back judge was whining. But, hey, it's been an interesting night. So, 2.57. I'll fix my clock here in a second. We have a... Uh, and another whistle and more flags I coming. Know, what, that looked like a busted play. Yeah, flags coming from all over. Flag on the play. It's going to back it up five. So probably a false start. False start against Archmere. But Nick, they got the ball back. First and 15 from the 40. 7 14. That was when they scored. So four and a half minutes have been uh, knocked off the clock so far. DMA going to have to make something happen defensively. First and 15 after the penalty. Kemsky, just a straight handoff to Finise, who's just going to try to stay in bounds. And a nice tackle. On the opposite side of the field, of course, by number 23, Josh Roy. So no gain on that carry from Finise. So they, they had a lot of success moving it. And then now that their DMA's tighten up a little bit, and your archman, you're like, well, we can possibly live with this, but still some time on that clock. And again, timeouts, I believe, for DMA one remaining, Mike. Or do they, are they out? They lost track. I, I think it's, no, they're not out. They have, no, at, they least have at least one timeout left to the Seahawks. Second and 15 after the carry for no gain on first down. Kemsky letting that clock run. He'll come back, fake the handoff to Hagenberg, and now it's Kemsky on the keeper, and he'll pick up three yeah, yards. He's going to try to force DMA to use these timeouts. Pick up of two. And nothing yet, as it's now going to be third down at about 12. And a big play, or the next couple plays here for that DMA defense, and this being the biggest, third. You're looking at 90 seconds. You get run a play here, you can burn another 40 seconds. This could be under a minute to go when DMA gets the ball back, if they get the ball back. 
Third and 11, we'll call it. 126 and ticking, DMA. Trying to give their offense a chance. Archmere trying to run this thing out. Now, would he pass here? Who knows? No. Up the middle to Panice. He's got running room. Going to try to get to the sideline. He's taken down as he dives forward close to the first down marker, but he will be a few yards short. And there's his timeout. Now, Panice knew to go down in bounds. Obviously, he, he dove, you know, once he figured out he's going to get knocked out of bounds, he just decided to go down, hit, hit the knee on the turf. Gain of seven, 13 carries for 56 yards for Colt Finise. So an interesting play here. It's a fourth and about five. You know, if you don't get the first down, it's gonna, the clock's going to stop on the turnover on downs. There's really no harm in passing the ball here. If you maybe a play action, you've been running the ball, running, running, running. Maybe you can get Duncan behind the, uh, or Gavin Lee behind the defense, or run a little screen to Hagenberg or something. So here we go, homecoming Friday night on the campus of Delaware Military Academy who was on defense. It's fourth down and four for the visiting Hawks who lead 14 to 12 with a minute to go here in the fourth. DMA needs to come up with the stop. If Archmere gets four yards in the first down, they put this thing on ice. And there's a here we go. Finise to the left of Miles Kemsky on fourth and four. He might be a safety valve here. We'll see. Hagenberg going to line up now to the right side. They try to draw him off sides. They Here's tried. Timeout for Archmer. Timeout, Coach Blayson. Yeah, he now thinks of might. everything, doesn't he? Well, now let's see. What do you do if you're Archmer? Are you going to go for it again? Is there any thought that you punt this thing away and pin him deep? What would you do here? I don't think I'd punt. You already... They're at the 29. You're looking at a 70-plus yard drive that they're going to have to go. Um, they do have the big play capability, but I'm not sure that I would punt here. I mean, you do have Finise. He could put him at the five. He could put him at the five. Well, let's but see. I a first I, down I, wins it. I think I'd run the play. A first down would win it. 14 to six. Middletown still on top of Smyrna. 7:03. To go in the fourth quarter, down at Smyrna in the Harvest Bowl. Odessa's going to pick up another win tonight. They lead Conrad. Uh, Brandywine, a big win. And we over might Earl be looking College. to add them to the schedule next yeah, week. Just a thought. Do. St. Andrews will win this afternoon over First State. We'll see. So, congratulations to the uh, Saints from St. Andrews. Fourth and four. Kemsky back in the shotgun. DMA needs to get a stop here to keep their hopes alive. Hand off to Finise. He breaks a tackle, but not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. And some life for the Seahawks. They'll have 57 seconds to go. 68 yards. I, th I think they have one time out. I kind of lost track early in the half. They may have zero. Yeah, I don't, they may have zero. Finise loses a yard on the carry. And a life for DMA. I think, I think the 35 is a, a, a pipe dream. I don't. He was at the. He was dragged back to the 35. Call it the 30-yard line. So here we go. A chance offensively for DMA. But they do have a chance, and they have some big play guys on that team. And haven't been able to get anything going on offense since that first quarter. Really no long drives at all, Mike. Just no. that 53-yard touchdown courtesy of Edward Emmons. Just a big play. Other than that. Haven't been really to put too much together except for that last touchdown drive. Yeah, the Hawks got a few guys back, but you don't want to go into prevent. That prevents winning, right? Double slot for Teal. Going to fire quickly to the sideline. That one skips in incomplete. And uh, just two seconds ran off the clock on that one. There's also this, Nick. Incomplete. What has their game been Second on the DNA? Run, ten. run, and run, and run. And now... Not that he can't throw, but you're asking Odell, uh, Odell, Odell Teal to throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. <clears throat> he's, he's not a bad thrower, but that's not their bread and butter. And against a good secondary for Archmere. Yeah, they're ball hawks. Here's the snap. Teal trying to set up a double move, trying to guide his receiver, going to just launch it out of play and live to throw another down. <laughs> Yeah, that ball was uh, at the Archmere cheerleaders back there. So now third and ten. What a 
fantastic game we've had here. It's been, we've had a, are some good ones here the last couple of weeks. Not a high scoring we've game. We've been tonight, lucky. But, but there's been a lot of intrigue and and uh, just a homecoming. Yeah, I was, Absolutely. I was a homecoming at Dover last week. And, and a big crowd still remaining crowd. here at DMA. The weather cleared out nicely for us. It was uh, it's just a beautiful thing. We're so fortunate that we get to be able to do this every week. You know, this is a this is a lot of fun. Double slot for DMA Mosel. The near side receiver, Roy to the other side. Alongside Maynard. Teal fires across the middle, has his man. It's Malcolm Roy who makes the catch at the 45. To Malcolm Roy for a Seahawks first down. Bach is moving. And they spike the ball. And they'll clock it now with 36 and a half seconds. Teal with that 15 yard completion up to 106 yards passing. That catch for Roy. Has him up to 78 yards receiving. Under five to go in Smyrna. Middletown still leads that one 14 to uh, six. Battle in the Harvest Bowl. Yeah, you're not used to seeing Smyrna team being held to six points. Here we go now. Back to our game right here, the exciting game right here. Alex Mosel in the slot of the trips to the bottom of the screen. Maynard and Roy as well. Teal dropping deep. He's now going to take off and run. Around the official he goes. First down as he gets out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. And that's a Seahawks first down. 26 seconds to work with now for DMA who have it now into Archmere territory at the Archmere 45-yard line. Good job by Teal. Saw some open space. A lot of players back for Archmere, so not as many guys up as they have had. Maynard. Burn a little clock on that one. Maynard and Mosel. Good trips right. Alongside Frank to the trip side. Malcolm Roy one-on-one -on, -one on the back side. Roy in the back next to Odell Teal. 26 seconds to go. 45 yards to go for DMA. Here's the snap. And they're going to blow this one dead. And they're going to stop it in the middle of the play. Right in the middle of the play is kind of weird. There may have been a, is there a flag. That's interesting. The play? I don't see a flag on the field. 22 even on the clock. They may, if, it's, if the ball wasn't it, they may just reset the clock and play it again. And it's going to be interesting here once again. Of course, the referees, I don't believe, have headsets on with the microphone. We don't have that if, if they did, I haven't heard them all night. But there is a procedure call against DMA. No flags came out. Now, That's going to cost them five. And now, is there a runoff? I guess not in high school. Well, they, they moved the clock back to 26 seconds. So they gave them time back. First and 15 from the 50. So uh, not too big of a deal if you're DMA. That'll back you up five yards. So instead of 45, you need 50. 26 seconds to go. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Teal deep in the gun. Has time to throw. Going to launch this one to the sideline. Kemsky's it's up there. for grabs, and Kemsky oh. dropped the interception. So DMA lives to see another down. Miles Kemsky had that lined up from the time it left Teal's hand. And that one just, just slipped, I believe, out of the hands of Odell Teal. That one a little wobbly in the air and just came out of his hand wrong. Yeah, and I've seen a few like that. Maybe it's just misty out here tonight. Maybe yeah. that ball's just slipping out of, the, uh, out of his hands. So now down to 19 seconds for the Seahawks. And it is uh, third, right? Third down to 15. I believe second and 15 second, after the okay. penalty. So that, that I can't see the sign with the lighting. Maynard, Mosel, Second and 50, Frank Correct. in the trip side. Malcolm Roy, one-on-one -on -one to the backside, but he's got safety help over the top. Teal fires to the sideline. It hangs, and he's got his man at the 40. Won't be enough for a first down, but they pick up 10. The pass complete over to Malcolm Roy, who's a little hobbly on the way up. And that's a Seahawks first down. Well, they are stretching his clock as much as, as possible. It's not a first down, though. Roy, 88 yards receiving now for they, DMA. They, they announced first down. It's still third and five. No, third and five, and the clock is stopped. 
I think he went out of bounds. And I went out of bounds, so a good call by Malcolm Roy. A smart player gets out of bounds. And now 13 and a half seconds, maybe two plays if you're the Seahawks. Yeah, they've been going to these mid-ranges. They're going to have to go deep. This one's tipped up in the air and finds his receiver. Archman says he's out of bounds. Let's see what the call is. It is they... a complete pass. And that's Malcolm Roy. That's a gain of 15 for Roy. It's at the 26. So here we go, Mike. 26 yard line, maybe. That play took just three seconds off the clock. And now an Archmere defensive back is down on the far side of the field. All right, Nick and I just needed a little, a little break there. Yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of excitement up here. We got, we got cheerleaders and uh, with pink pom poms, and students in front yeah, of we us. We got the kids to our left here. They're the having a ball right next to us. us. Not really hanging out with us, but they're here guarding our stuff. Nine point eight to go. It's first and ten to twenty six. Downs don't matter here. No. But Nick, they've been going that eight ten, eight ten, eight ten, and uh, they've been stopping the clock when they needed to. An impressive drive here for the Seahawks so far. And again, they'll have 10 seconds to go 26 yards. Yeah, two plays, and we don't know the extent of their field goal game, right? They're only down two points. If they get enough yards, maybe they attempt a field goal. We're not sure. Just something to throw out there. Yeah, I think they'd probably have to be within a 30-yard field goal range. So again, unsure about timeouts as well, unfortunately, for us up yeah, here. Yeah, we lost track. The producer yeah, stinks. <laughs> A short man tonight. Trips now to the top of the screen. Malcolm Roy is going to be by himself here. I heard here. another whistle. One on one. This time it looks like Kemsky has timeout. moved a corner. So Archmere going to take a final timeout here. So Archmere is out of timeouts. So DMA has been going. Trips to one side. They've been splitting up Malcolm Roy alone to the other side. And now we've seen Miles Kemsky move from safety to corner as he's going to now look to lock up Malcolm Roy here and maybe a coaching decision from Coach Belace to put one of his better DBs step for step with Malcolm Roy. Roy's had a heck of a game tonight. Six catches, 105 yards for right. number one in blue. DMA is out of timeouts. I believe what I may have heard in there is that they signaled a DMA time, an Archer timeout once. It was actually a DMA timeout. I don't know if Archer has any left. DMA has zero. Well, they'll have 10 seconds to go 26. Or, like you mentioned, can they get close enough? Do they have a kicker? And again, no timeouts. No timeouts. You'd have to, you'd have to get the ball and, and spike it or get set in a hurry. A change here. Dante Brooks, the sophomore, is out in the slot receiver who are now in double slot instead of the trips. And uh, now we'll motion to trips. Teal. He's got look end zone, I think. Here, Looking. Right? Doesn't have anybody open. He's just going to throw this one away, and we'll be down to our final play here at Fusco Memorial Field. And my clock ran out, but we still have 4.4 4 seconds. seconds. DMA needs to go 26 yards. And what has been an excellent ball game, Mike. And here we go. Crowds getting into it on their feet. This is it. As we have the final play of a homecoming Friday between DMA and Archmere, and they're going to line up for the field goal, Mike. Nick, this is a 43, a 43-yard field goal attempt. A lefty out there kicking. A 43-yard attempt 25. for number 25, Brady Appleton. He was also in homecoming court. How about that? What a night that would be for him. The lefty lines it up. DMA trailing by two. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is blocked, and that'll do it. The clock's still running, but it doesn't matter. Archmere holds off the Seahawks here at home as they spoil homecoming for DMA with a 14-12 win. And what a game it was coming down to the final play. What just happened here? <laughs> like, wow. What a game we had here. This is unbelievable. A little bit of everything here, Nick. That's uh, just a, a fantastic, uh, intriguing game. A lot of twists and turns, and and uh, the team's lining up in midfield. Good to see. Not a lot of you know, no animosity here. And I like the decision to kick the field goal from Coach Matt Carey. Just the push from Marchmere. Somebody got a hand on it, and that'll end things.
as Archmere comes back and wins 14 to 12 after trailing six to nothing. And we're gonna go back, Mike, and you look at that two point conversion attempt stopped at the goal line. And that's gonna be the difference here tonight. Yeah, it was a huge win. And DMA, they wanted that call. Uh, they didn't get in and then they missed the first extra point because of a penalty. Uh, that was on the board, they had to take that one off. So uh, Archer had some turnovers, DMA had some trouble on the extra points, and, and that was the difference. 14 to 12, Archmere ends the losing streak, and they get a win here on the road. And Mike, game, who you right? got? Who do you got as your player uh, of the game? I'd probably go gone. with that Cole Finis. Once again, a great game for number 22 in white. Miles Kemsky right there with them. An interception on defense and a great job offensively for the quarterback. But a great game nonetheless from both of these teams. What an entertaining one as we projected it to be. A 14-12 win for the Ox on the road. For Nick Alessandrini, Mike Lang, and Nick Calladay. Thanks for joining us here on a Friday night. Make sure to tune back into Delaware Live Sports tomorrow afternoon at noon. Mike's going to be a good one between Milford and St. Elizabeth. Looking forward to it. Jason will be uh, back in service, and uh, we believe uh, the man upstairs will be the man upstairs tomorrow, the man next to the booth tomorrow at Abyssinia, Nick Halliday. And uh, I'm expecting to go in with the interclass, the 12, class two and class one. I think St. E's uh, is going to be tested. Milford is, is going to be a real test for St. E's, but I think... I think it'll be a close one, so. It's gonna be a good one. That one. What a weekend of high school football. We got you some scores earlier. They'll be online later on. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for joining us for Nick Alistair, Mike Lang, and Nick Halliday. That'll do it for us here from Anthony, or excuse me, Fusco Memorial Field. A big win for Archmere on the road here at DMA 14 to 12.